Hello. I think we're live. Somebody let us know in the comments if we are. Um, hello and welcome back to, well, not welcome back because we've not done one of these before, a deadline day live stream uh, brought to you by Argo Life in partnership with the Green and White podcast, which are basically the same thing. Um, so really easy to sort out a partnership. Um, I don't think I'm going to have time to introduce everyone tonight. We've got an awful lot going on, but obviously joining me for the first 15 minutes, we're going to be rotating in and out all night to keep the opinions fresh and um, the debates raging on. Obviously, starting off is obviously Joe, Nick and Finn, as you can see, or hopefully you can see. Um, all the comments are rolling in. Um, so, yep, yeah, you can see us. Really good to see. Um, has Sam Down signed on at the Job Centre, says Andy Day. So Sam Down is joining us later on. Let's just let's just get into this. And I'm going to open I'm going to ask Nick a very open ended question, because as people will realize, I have done next to no um, next to no preparation for this. Nick, just give us a nice little roundup of your thoughts on the transfer business so far. Um, well, I think it's been positive, to be fair. I mean, to begin with, obviously, there was a lot of panic and uh, a lot of head loss around, obviously, all the players that have left us. Um, there's a lot of decent talent, especially with Finn and Zaz. I thought that was, you know, it's going to be, the, the amount of head loss around that was ridiculous. Uh, but, like I said, the contacts that Fozzie's had and the, the players that he's brought in seem to have seem to have already had a positive impact. I, I personally think it's made us a little bit more solid looking at the last few games. Um, and like he said today in his uh, pre-match presser for the uh, Swansea game in the weekend, trying to get, you know, ch trying to change those away results. I think we need to be a bit more solid. And I think with the with the with the, uh, the players that he's brought in, that's going to go a long way towards that. Joining me tonight with his best Jim White impression, yellow tie and all. See Joe White, is, uh, Joe White, no Joe Bell. Sure. See, that's how good you are at this impression. Um, Joe Bell. Um, a couple of comments asking you if you've been using hair dye. How, how have you? What have you made of uh, our January business so far? Before we get into the specifics, yeah, I think we're, we're going to touch on it a lot more as the um, night goes on. But I think it's it's always difficult to replace a, a player of Finn's as his ability. Um, you know, it, it's. It's always, you know, there's tasks that were set to Ian Foster and he managed to to get down to work pretty quickly and start to build his own squad. So um, overall, I think it's been positive. I'm still clinging on to the hope that over the next two hours and 57 minutes that we might be able to uh, we might be able to sign a striker. But, you know, let's see how it goes. I mean, we've we've been linked with quite a few uh interesting names should we say over the last couple of days so um yeah let's let's just see how we go i think overall though aaron i think it's been pretty positive yeah i mean we've got an awful lot to talk about just from today alone obviously there's been a bit of deadline day drama we've got to welcome our new signing uh lino susa we've got obviously morgan whitaker so far touchwood is staying um there's you know there's rumors of um femi aziz coming in Saxon early might be off, but we don't know about that. Hence the eyes emoji. Uh, can't give too much away. Uh, we're going to do a January roundup. Um, talk about Foster's impact. Uh, Swansea preview. Obviously, your your questions and comments, keep them coming in. Um, and if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. Um, share us about. And, uh, and there's, I'm sure there's an awful lot more. There's, there's going to be a huge debate between John and Sam coming up later as well. Um, Finn, same open-ended question to you then. January thoughts? Uh, yeah, pretty good to be honest. Um, you know, all of the signings that have come in have appeared to make a positive impact. Obviously, bit of a blow losing. Um, well, I say bit of a blow, big blow lo losing as as. Uh, but I think obviously I, I mentioned on the last part. I think when when we're going to struggle to replace his um, individual quality immediately um, for sure. Um, but, you know, the signings that have come in have kind of actually uh, probably improved the depth that we had before the, the window. Um, so, so yeah, in general, uh, fairly positive and, um, yeah, some, some, some good, some, some good, um, some good additions to the squad. Um, I mean, I don't know about, uh, 
line of Caesar, but that looks like another um, promising um, addition and somebody who um, is well known to to Ian Foster. So, yeah, all good, really. Yeah, you're touching it there, Finn. Obviously, Argo announced um, three hours ago, apparently. That seems an awful long time ago. Um, the signing of Lino or Lino. I can't mm. imagine it's actually called Lino. Um, he might get brought up on a few ref watches later on in the season, if so. Um, <laughs> we've, signed, we've signed here, Argo signed England under 19s left back Lino Sousa on loan as the press release goes. Um, as the January transfer deadline approaches, Sousa has left Arsenal joining on a uh, permanent basis for Aston Villa. He's immediately headed down to the southwest to join us on loan until the end of the current season. Obviously, we've already touched on Finn and Zaz as well, Nick. Um, just just before we talk about Sousa himself, obviously, what does this mean? Um, you know, our part our relationship with Aston Villa is obviously still on good terms despite um Kessa Hayden and Azaz returning. Yeah, I think it shows that a club, a Premier League club like Villa trust you know Plymouth Argyle with their young players. They trust us to bring them on and in and improve them and ultimately, I mean, either fit into their first team like Kessa Hayden obviously was on the bench this week, wasn't he, for, for Villa? Or even sell them on like they did with Finn. So, I think it's it's only a positive thing. Um, and I think having Foster, obviously who's been in that England setup in that under 18s, under 19 setup, I think having him in place will only solidify those links. I think with Villa in in, in bringing in those uh, young young promising talents across the across the country. Yeah, I can imagine, Joe. You, you read the press releases of uh, St. Pat's Athletics, um, which which we'll get on to in a bit. Uh, so obviously, you've got a bit of spare time in your hands. I assume you've checked out uh, Sousa on YouTube. What, what sort of player are we getting? A very accomplished fullback for his age. Um, you know, he, he's very very good with the ball at his feet. Um, you know, I think Steve Stevie's comment there that's just come up about. You know, Villa using us as a bit of a learning ground for some of their young players. Villa seem to have an eye at the moment for good young talent. Um, and if you believe all of the reports that have come in in recent days, that there were plenty of big names after after Sousa, the likes of uh, Galatasaray, Juventus, Glasgow Rangers were all linked with him. So um, it's interesting he's chosen Arsenal. Sorry, it's interesting he's chosen Villa from Arsenal. Um, you know, and we're we're the first small step on the on the way for him. Yeah, Argo Dad's talking about um Femi Aziz. We'll get on to that in a bit. Um, hopefully we'll be covering an incoming whilst we're like go on, Joe. Go on. Don't need to put your hand yeah, I'm up. I'm gonna Just do I'm well I'm gonna I'm gonna do my first Jim White bit of the evening. I do have an update, Aaron, on oh, Femi you? Aziz if you, you want the, one. Um, you the little, the straight gift straight Let's in. <laughs> Straight in with it. Um, it's from Andy Preston, who's a sports reporter covering Reading for Wokingham Sport and Wokingham Today. Um, I'm a big fan who of recently sports. just tweeted on X nine minutes ago. He says, Three hours to go as it stands. Nib, Smith, Wing, and Aziz are all staying at Reading. Um, he goes on to say, Plymouth have a strong interest in Aziz, but so far no deal has been agreed. Obviously, that cat that could change. Um, Nibs and Smith are not pushing for moves away. And he hints that 11 p.m. can't come soon enough for the Royals fans. So it's clear that there is interest in Aziz. It's just whether or not time's on Argyle's side or not. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, there seems to be an awful lot of uh, discontent between um, not just the Reading fans, but between the, the certain members of the board as well. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know. There could still be some business done. Um, uh, G George saying, get Sam Downs outside Home Park. That would be good. If somebody's got um, a purple instrument to stick in his ear. That would be even better. Uh, anyway, where were we? We're talking about Sousa, right? So, uh, Finn, thoughts on thoughts on our new man? Yeah. Uh, like I said, really, he's got of... Um, I, I can't claim to know a lot about him. Um uh, but you know every. I mean, if, it, if this means anything, I think obviously um, uh, I've seen a few few tweets in the past what day or so said that Arsenal couldn't quite believe some Arsenal fans can, who follow the academy couldn't quite believe they were letting him go to Villa, um, and they and one um, 
compared it to kind of uh, when when they let Amari Hutchinson go, who's obviously um, done very well since since leaving Arsenal. So if that's anything to go by, um, that's that's quite um, pleasing, and obviously, for, for, like I said, Foster know Foster knows the guy, and um, it's good to see that people who have worked with him previously want to come back and work for him again um, in a club setting. Um, so so yeah, that it's all positive, I think. Yeah, I mean the comments aren't as good as last time yet. You've still got time, people. Um, the, the more the more jokes, the merrier. Please, um, we're gonna we're gonna be saying goodbye already to Nick in a few minutes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crack on a few more questions for you. Um, have I already come to you on Sousa? This is how little prep I've done. I genuinely yeah. don't know. Yeah, you've already yeah, answered. You like him that's good uh other business obviously that you, you messaged me not not long ago um talking about a, a lack of a striker we'll get onto finn's thoughts on that in a bit um <laughs> seemed to be a bit more radical uh obviously that that's three windows now um that, that we've only really brought in ben wayne who you know for all the will in the world isn't really up to it yet yet um what are your thoughts on the on the striker situation I think we've got enough to to get by, but my fear is if we get another injury situation where we lose Hardy and possibly Bundu in the same sort of period again, like we did <clears throat> on the season, then we're down to Wayne and Izaka on their own. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, like you say, Wayne's not really hit the ground running in terms of scoring in the championship at the moment. And obviously, with Freddie being, uh, you know, a young promising talent very very little experience in any league football not just championship football it's a big big ask for those two to start scoring goals um so i think i mean granted a goal scorer is at a premium especially in january you're going to pay you're going to pay through through the nose for a goal scorer in january um but like i said I, if we could get just another body in the door in that area um i'd feel a little bit more comfortable it doesn't have they don't you know it doesn't have to be someone who's going to walk into the starting 11 and start every week just someone that can be there just in case we need someone to to fill fill a void um but yeah that, that's what that's my personal feeling on it at the moment yeah jack, obviously jack leslie uh asked what what are the chances of a striker do you reckon still got a bit of time it's like wow. earlier on the window when I was at home park, I spoke to Kevin Nansky and I said, I've just, you know, I said, like, good transfer business so far. Just like to see a striker come in. And uh, even even then, Nats was saying about how they're very hard to come by. Like everybody knows, a striker, getting a striker in is, is a very hard thing to do unless you've got mega bucks. So even then, it was, you know, it, it was, it was going to be one of those touch and go things where we can do it. Will it happen? I doubt it now, this late in the window. I can't see it happening. Um, but who knows? Things happen very quickly on deadline day, don't they? They do indeed. And obviously, the, the biggest um, news of the deadline day so far is that we've managed to keep... Um, uh, God, what's his name? Morgan Whitaker. That's his name. I'm literally reading his name off the screen and couldn't remember it. Um a few people asking about whether Morgan Whitaker could fill in as a striker. Don't see why not. You should, uh, what you, your thoughts on that, Joe? If, if you know, if needs be, Ryan Hardy. Yeah, don't need another striker. Okay. We got Scott. We got what should be Scotland's number one striker. No, in all seriousness, look, Whitaker can play through through the middle. I don't think it's necessarily his um, best position. Um, you know, we could end up in the realms of playing a, a so-called false nine that a lot of the big clubs tend to play if, if push comes to shove um but look you know I'd, I'd love to see a striker in the next couple of hours um or at least another attacker so you could then perhaps shuffle the pack a little bit but um you know you would say if we're being honest that that time is time is running out unfortunately yeah, Mark, Mark Watson suggested Dane Scarlett on loan from Spurs, but he's played for Spurs in the League Cup, so therefore, and Ipswich so and cannot. We've already got two. we've already got two players from Spurs as well, haven't we? Yeah, that's very true. Um, there was a good question here somewhere. I've skipped over it. Um, oh, Joe, you say about seeing a, a new striker this weekend? We'll definitely be seeing those as a Great Western are on strike. 
uh, as we head up to Swansea. We'll get onto a preview in a bit. There's my shit joke. First shit joke of the evening. Um, out of the way. Breaking news. You've just oh, seen it. Oh, hang on. Oh, where is it? There it is. Oh, there we go. Go on, Joe. There it is. Um, Saxon Early has joined Wickham Wanderers on loan until the end of the season. Um, he will obviously join. He will obviously join Matt Butcher up there, um, who's gone on a permanent. Um, but yeah, Saxon's gone on loan um, to get some game time after suffering that ankle ligament damage just after the Watford game. Brilliant. And to to join us for this breaking news behind. If I can get rid of this comment behind the scenes, I've managed to um, skip out Nick, who will, I will thank and say goodbye to in a minute. Um, but joined by Craig, known as the Green Fever. Hello. How are you, Craig? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you, lads? Obviously, breaking news. We knew there was going to be some excitement today. Saxon early to Wickham. Initial thoughts? It's a bit surprising, that, really, because all day they've been linked with a move to Stevenage. So it's kind of gone sort of left field, really. And obviously, you know, I think um, uh, Stevenage fans would be pretty dead gutted because obviously he was used to play at Stevenage. But I think that's a great signing for Wickham. Of course, he'll be joining Matt Butcher. Of course, um, still a bit disappointed on that. We didn't get any money for him, but um, you know, a, bit, a great club servant for the football club. Saxon early in a late move uh, from Jason mm. there. Um Rory says Wickham just wants to be us, Joe. Why? Why is that? Why have they become such Argyle lovers all of a sudden? Because I detest them. It's, it's a, it's a weird one, isn't it? Um, I think to be fair, I think all that animosity between Argyle and Wickham's in the past, isn't it? You know, that was all that was all from the Derek Adams days. That animosity, I think, um, you know, that hatchet was was buried with um, when Adams left the football club, and and since then, really, there's bar the little bit of, of Twitter spat that goes on. Um, there doesn't seem to be too much niggle in the way between the two teams. And, of course, there was that United front was it the last year when um, TJ DeBar collapsed at the end of the league clash down here. And I think um, I think both show, both sides showed a lot of class that night with, with how the situation was dealt with. And, um, you know, the... the good relationships forged from from that moment on really and you know at the end of the day these are two professional football clubs so if there is any problem behind the scenes you know for for Wickham they're in in desperate need to kick start their season because they've they've been on a pretty barren run of late so um yeah I mean Matt Butch is a quality signing for them and and hopefully Saxon can go and get game time and, and really influence their side yeah as Zach says if you can't beat them join them they've always wanted to be us and now they can build a little former Argyle XI. I mean, obviously not former, but um, yeah. Um, I'm just missing sound effects. Oh, right. Okay, sorry. I've just got that. Yes, I am just missing sound effects. You're right. Anyway, um, as as a whole, then Craig, how do how do you, how do you think January's gone? I think it has been up and down, really. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. Of course, you know we lost KKH. You know Kane Kessler. We've lost. You know Finnezars. We lost Kundal. Don't really miss Lewis Warrington. I don't know why I'll go sign him, to be honest. Useless of a football player for this football club. But that's another story. But I think, you know, Diarco Gabby. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just being honest. You know, I'm not a massive fan of Lewis Warrington. I don't think he was a great signing for us. Um, you know, Diarco Gabby, for sure, experience in that midfield. Alfie Devine, you know, to repl um, replace um, Finizaz. Uh, I think, it, obviously, Matthew Sinanola. There's just, it's just been a great blend of youth and experience. And, uh, and of course, um, I think most Argyle fans will be happy if we can get that Aziz over the line and strengthen up front. Yeah, I've seen seen a comment uh, somewhere, but it's, it's I can't find it now. Disappear. Somebody says that uh, Aziz has been spotted at home park. I can't really find that. Um, Paul Booker says, do we not think it's about time that Adam was a regular starter considering his recent performances? I assume that was Adam Forshaw. Good question. I don't know. Come back to me if, you, if that's what you mean. Um, Cundall overrated. Divine looks better. Obviously, we, we signed Divine in the in in this window. Uh, Finn, oh, I'm all over the place tonight. Finn, that is your name. Finn, I might even put names on so I know who you are. Uh, obviously, uh, Divine's come in this window. Thoughts on him? 
Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's um, he had a great time at Port Vale, but I think it, you know I know it's League One. It, you've got to give him time to adjust. Obviously, it's a big step up playing in the Championship. Of course, you know he knows Foster from you know from his time at England. So I think we just have to give him that time. But I think what I've seen of him, I think we're very very impressed. You know, can play up front, can play behind the striker. You know, very good at um, was influencing the game against. Um, against Cardiff, but we need to get him more involved with the player. They think we didn't really give him the ball as much to try and influence the game. But if we can give the ball to him more, I think he can score chances and, and can make goals for us. I think he, if a very, very good sign then. Yeah, a nice little uh, Sky Sports update there. 1-0 Rashford. I didn't even know United were playing tomorrow. So I'm more uh, concerned. Uh, oh, he meant Adam Randall. Yes, I forgot. How can I, I often forget that we have a player called Adam Randall, despite the fact, as uh, Sam said on the latest pod, I would happily elope with him. Um, let, let, before we get on to Adam Randall, obviously there's been, been a bit of a change up in midfield. Obviously, Matt Butcher has joined Saxon Early, or Saxon Early has joined Matt Butcher, one or the other. I'm sure they might get a cushy little flat together uh, somewhere in High Wycombe. Um, Joe, obviously, you know, Matt's departure. What are your, what are your initial thoughts on that? Yeah, quite quite sad, really. I think Butch, has, as I said yesterday on, on social media, Butch has been a consummate professional since he's come into the football club. Um, you know, we I know in recent games the, the one that stand the sort of thing that stands out in your memory is that horrendous back pass at, at Cardiff. Um, but there are so many, so many good moments from Butch's time here. Obviously, everyone will also remember the the famous goal in front of the big bank in, in April that you know really did kick start that end of season push towards the, the title. So um always gave us everything he had i think the key thing about matt butcher is the fact he could play anywhere across anywhere across the pitch i mean god knows how many positions he actually played for us during his time but um he's the sort of player that you know everyone want you know every manager would want a matt butcher in their side because of the number of positions he could play so um i actually thought he could have had the pick of any of the 24 in league 1 i think he could have slotted into any single one of them um, you know, I, I don't even think he'd looked out of place in Portsmouth midfield or something like that. I think he's he's that good for the level. So um, it's a shame. Look, I hope it works out for him. You know, no animosity whatsoever. I, I just hope it's a, a move that works out. I'm a little bit concerned about which direction, um, which direction Wickham are heading at the moment. Um, but look, you know, maybe Butch is the man to to turn it around. Who knows? Yeah, go on, uh, go on, Finn. Matt Butcher obviously departed, joined Saxon early. Wickham, right move, right time. I think so. Um, I think he would have been disappointed with the amount of minutes he got this season. Um, obviously, what a way to go out against Leeds. Um, I mean, I, I literally said on the last pod that I'd, if he wasn't going, which now he has, but if he wasn't going this window, then uh, I would have started him against Swansea because I felt his performance deserved that. Having said that, we've obviously, he obviously, you know, that everyone makes mistakes, but that mistake against Cardiff was poor. And I think maybe then, um, he, you know, he, he was a bit part to play, but maybe the, the management looked at, looked at that then and just thought um, they didn't really see a place for him in the side, which is, which is, you know, a shame for him because he's been a good servant and stuff. And, he, you know, it, it sounds like we're, it sounds like we're talking, um, that he's been here for two, three years, the way that we're talking, but he was only here 18 months. Um, so it kind of just says how much of an impact he had, particularly at the in the in, in the running, not just the Exeter goal, but he really his performances are, you know, really stepped up in particular um towards towards the end of the running. And um, you know, I think he, you know, I think with all the words said by Argo and everyone on Twitter, just a fantastic professional. And like Joe said. Uh, player that every manager wants in his side. How, having said that, uh, this is no disrespect to Matt Butcher. I do think that you know that we can improve on his um, on his ability in 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 the squad, and we will want to probably do that long term. Uh, but yes, in general, a very a very good player for us, um, and um, one that will be fondly remembered by Argyle fans. I think in general. Yeah, just address uh, address a couple of comments. Oliver asked, did we get any money for Butcher? No, we uh, released him 
on a free, uh, meaning that he could sign for Wicked Wanderers. I know that a few people seemed a bit miffed that we didn't get any money for him. To be honest, what would we have really got? You know, a hundred grand. Let's be honest. Also, the way I see it, it we're just repaying the favour of, of Norwich, who released uh, Forshaw to sign for us. So you know, we'd just, we'd just be moving that money about anyway. So not really big. Issue for me, anyway. Um, Steve says, I can't believe that he's gone to Wickham, lads. Uh, way too good, I agree. Obviously, Joe said as well, I, I feel like he could have had a pick of a few more clubs there. I think he could have got another League One promotion on his belt, but then I suppose he'd be back in the same position, dropping back into League One again. Um, uh, there was another comment. Uh, oh, it's gone now, anyway. Uh, Lewis Walker asks, interesting to see if we're still using data as a key to sign players. Um, considering Sorinola, Forshaw and Phillips have not played much football this season to generate data from. Uh, are we changing it up a bit, Joe? Are we changing our strategy here? Or is it just uh, jobs, jobs for the boys? Is, is Foster just going through his Possibly. contact? Um, I, think it's impo- I think Foster probably is pulling in a few favours early doors just to help him get settled into the role. Um, certainly the signing of, as as the question said, certainly the signing of uh, Sorinola would suggest that data perhaps hasn't been used, given how little game time he's played this season. Obviously, Phillips will have um, youth age group data they could have gone off and, and for sure would have had a few appearances for Norwich to have gone off. So um, it's an interesting one, but um, yeah, whether it not it fosters as data driven as Shuey, time will tell, I suppose, won't they? Yeah, there's a, there's a few people in the comments. Uh, so we're, let's find the, the, the first one. Sam is saying that Aziz uh, is a done deal, pending on medical, which is currently underway. A happy deadline to pl- uh, deadline day to Plewer. So I'm not sure. Um, I can't vouch for the reliability of Sander in the comments, but um, there's a few um, mentioning it on on Twitter. So maybe uh, maybe that is um, incoming. We're trying to. We, we, been speaking to uh, the Tilehurst stand, Reading's uh, equivalent of Argo Life, um, and they seem a bit annoyed that he's going. But it's more of the um, more of the fact that they, they're going to have to feel a five-a-side team rather than uh, anything else. As soon as that is confirmed, we'll bring you something on that. Um, it's almost time to change you out again, Craig. You're off for your own your own stream in a minute. So um, let's find a random question from the comments. Um, Oh, let's just let's just go with the big one. Let's just start talking about the big one. Obviously, Morgan Whitaker looks likely to stay. Touch wood. Not gonna not gonna tempt fate just yet. Obviously, um, you know he's been linked to Everton, Luton, Fulham, Brentford, Lazio, West Ham. Who hasn't Everyone. been linked to? Um, exactly. Um, thoughts on thoughts on keeping him? Obviously, big big statement that. Huge. It, it, it shows the ambition of the football club, doesn't it? You know, they could have you know seen the money and thought, ooh. You know, that's have a you know so an interesting idea, but you know, fair play to Ju Snip, Hallett, and of course um Andrew Parkinson that you they've really stuck to their word and they've really played hardball. And um if he keeps scoring the goals and uh keep getting those assists, roll in the pennies for the summer and hopefully we'll get that money flowing and you know, Lazio, Brentford, whoever would have to pay us, you know, that bid in war and hopefully we can uh, you know, get even more money. I think he, you know, I think the, the sky's the limit with him. You know, we'll push up the table, uh, quite comfortably stay in the league. I don't think we'll be any trouble, and you know, we'll get a, at least a twenty million pound fee, um, in the summer. He's, yeah, he's obviously, he'll be on the summer. To be honest, I no, say. no, I can't, I can't really see that. Um, everybody's tweeting, me, everybody's in the comments saying that there's there's an incoming. Um, I can't see that. Um, unless I'm, no, unless I'm blind. no I've just seen that I've tweeted a. Uh, Two um, Wickham Wanderers, the, the best friends gif from Step Brothers. Hates that with an absolute passion. Um, disgusting. Obviously, Joe, whilst we're, we're on. Aaron, Aaron can on. I just quickly jump in with a question for Craig? Craig, who do you yeah. think has been the uh, the best sign-in that we've made so far and what we've seen on the limited limited knowledge we have of all the sign-ins? Who do you reckon is going to have the biggest impact on the, uh, on the side? That's a good question. That is a very, very good question. I think I it's between two. Questions. Yeah, I know <laughs> you do, don't you? Um, it's it's going to be between two, and if I had to pick one, I think 
I think Alfie Devine is really going to be a really crucial asset for us going forward. Uh, maybe not in terms of his goals and assist numbers, but in terms of his positional play, you know, the chances he can put into the box. He's got like pace, he's got power, he can get around from defenders. And I think just all round, he'll be the most, I think it'll be the most impactful signing. And I think, you know, with those goals and assists, he can contribute from his time at Port Vale. And I think you, he, he really knows how to play under Foster and, and they have that really good connection that hopefully he can flourish and uh, we can see the best. Cheers, Craig. Appreciate that. Thanks for jumping on. I know that you've got your own stream to Appreciate do tonight. It. Good luck with that. I'm going to switch Cheers, you Craig. out from, from one from one of uh, Argyle YouTube elite to another joining us. Um, yeah. Yeah, obviously <laughs> the Argyle way join us. Uh, just basic, open, generic question that I've asked everyone. What your thoughts on January so far? Um. I'd say overall, it has been a, a very, very good um, transfer window for us. Uh, obviously, coming into this transfer window, I didn't think we would get as many players as I thought we were. I just thought that some players some players would go and then some players would be replaced. But I feel like overall, I've been very, very surprised with the amount of players we've bought in, if I'm truly honest. Um, I did say that we needed to bring in more, more in defence and some in attack. Um, but defensive issues, a little bit still, but... Uh, so far, this transfer window is looking um, very, 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 very good, if I'm uh, truly honest. <clears throat> yeah, Phil, uh, James Alford says that actually Phillips is going to be the prize signing. I'm a bit all over the place. Uh, Oliver says that I always look a bit worried um, and it's stressing him out. That's because I am worried because when I do zero prep, I panic and talk really fast. Finn, Ashley Phillips going to be the prize signing. Obviously, we've signed six players so far. About to about to sign the seventh. What, what are your thoughts on on Big Ash Phillips or Young Big Ash Phillips? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so far, uh, bar a unlucky, um, unlucky bit of defending against against Cardiff for their goal, fantastic. Um, he really looks, you know, sort of way above his age grade. Um, you know, and then doesn't look out of place at all in this team. Um, I kind of have not not directly, but have compared him to a sort of uh, Rio Rio Ferdinand um, type player. Just really, really, really uh, good turn of pace um, and really assured coming forward uh, with the ball. I do think that he looks slightly weak in the air, but I I don't I I remember. Uh, watching the um, the Blackburn, uh, the the preview pod you did with the, for him um, with the Blackburn um, fan, and I think he said something about his um, aerial ability not being the best despite his size. Um, uh, but yes, a really astute addition to the defence and um, one that was definitely needed at the start of the window. Oh God! I always forget where the unmute button is. It's going really well. It's going really well. Um, Joe, go on. You jump in. You ask some questions. Crack Why on. Not? Um, Harvey, the 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 loss of Azaz um, obviously was was widely felt across the fan base. Quite rightly so. Yeah. Um, when you lose somebody so influential over the last eighteen months. Obviously, we didn't. We probably didn't expect to um, replace him this month. Just yeah. how him? Just how do you think Foster will go about for the rest of the season, plugging that gap of what Azaz has left creativity-wise, and just what sort of route do you expect him to go down in the summer in in replacing a player of Azaz's quality? Um, yeah. Um... Obviously, losing Finn Azaz was a tough, uh, tough one to take, as um, it was a crucial part of our team this season. Um, creatively, um, he has been our main creator throughout this whole season. The assist that he's brought, the goal contributions, um, feeding in the attackers, um, he has been absolutely crucial for us. And losing him um, was was a was a big hole in the team, and you could see it. You can definitely see it. Um, uh, with the first game um, we played without him. But br uh, bringing in a replacement in January, I didn't expect. Um, I did think we would probably bring in a replacement um, in the summer. But getting in Alfie Devine, um, I feel definitely, I think he definitely suits that role pretty well. Obviously, at 
at Port Vale, he played in a different position and it's an, um, it's an unusual one for him. Um, making the step up to the championship and uh, playing in a role that I feel like he's more suited at. Um, I feel like it. I feel like that was a um, a good signing for us to get in, and it's 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 one of them really where Alfie Devine he's a little bit of a, he's a little bit of a different player to Finn Azaz. Um, he, he likes to he likes to be on he likes to be on the ball and he likes to run with the ball. Finn Azaz was a player that liked to run with the ball as well and take the man on, but he likes to drift a little wider. I do see that when I was. Um, when I was at the game against uh, uh, Cardiff, you could you could definitely see that. Um, and Finn Azaz was a lot more central. He was a lot more central player. But with Alfie Devine, I am I am impressed with Alfie Devine so far. But I didn't expect him to come in January, if I'm truly honest. Well, yeah. I mean, the comments that are coming through there. I mean, Darren's comment is an interesting one about Ashley Phillips because it seems strange that there seems to be a bit of an emphasis with uh, Lino Sousa, Matty Sorinola and Ashley Phillips coming in in the transfer window. Adam Forshaw is probably more of a defensive midfielder than perhaps Darko JB will be. Are you surprised with um, how much of an emphasis there's been on the defensive side of things, this transfer window? Um, not really. I um, I did expect there to be some signings uh, in defence. I think we... Um... I think we definitely saw that we needed to sign um, more defenders. You can see for this whole season, the amount of goals we've conceded, the amount of mistakes we have, um, the amount of mistakes we have made in defence. Um, I think we we definitely needed to bring in a new centre back, of course, and letting Gillespie go was um, a definitely another reason to get another centre back in. Ashley Phillips definitely fits our team for sure. Um, the first two games he's played very very well and. Um, and I think really um he he does suit he does suit um the style um Fozzie wants to wants to settle for this team and for wing backs as well, um Lino Souza, I didn't expect I didn't expect to bring in um another fullback. I thought so, uh, Sorinola would have been the only one. But it's uh, it's good that we're now bringing in more depth in defense and including uh, wing back position as well. <clears throat> Well, yeah, I mean, especially given that that young Saxons now gone out to get some game time. Um, yeah. In terms of just looking ahead a little bit, we we didn't. Uh, it's probably missed of us. We didn't ask Nick or Craig. We've obviously got the the Swansea game. Um, strangely enough, in in less than forty eight hours away from now, it seems like a lot. You know, but no, it's more. Is it more than forty eight? It's a long day. It's been a long day, whether or not it's more or less than forty eight hours. It's a couple of days away um, until we got a Swansea. Um, you know, it's strange that we're so close to, to the deadline. We're not sure if there's going to be another body in the door before the weekend. Um, are you expecting uh, Sousa to have a big impact on in, on the squad on Saturday? Do you expect him to go straight in and start? Or is this one that you'd expect it to be Miller and, and Mumba? And just how do you see the Swansea game planning out? Um, <clears throat> it's It's... It's a little unsure, really. I do. There is a chance. There is a chance he could fit right in, but I think it's a little too early. I think, in my opinion, it's a little too early <clears throat> for for Sousa to go straight back. It's to go straight into the side. Sorry. Yeah, I feel like we'll probably still stick with um, the same team, um, the same players we stuck the last week. I think it was um, um, our wing backs were. I think it was Mikel Miller and. Uh, Bally Bally was on the right, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, I do think we'll probably stick with them too. As um, I think Fozzie's um, I think Fozzie has seen um, what full backs he likes to line up with, uh, wing backs he likes to line up with at the moment. But he could change it. I could see him definitely getting some game time for sure. So we'll see how quickly um, he decides to um, go with his um, first team. Really, he may he may get game time further down the road. And we just come to you because obviously people are just a little bit worried about whether or not you're still still awake and still going strong. Um, obviously, we've in this transfer window, it popped up a little bit earlier on the right hand side there of the screen that Macaulay Gillespie's gone out to Charlton, Matt Butcher's now gone to Wickham, Tariq Wright to Bradford, uh, Saxon Early obviously now to Wickham. 
um, with all the the lone players going back as well. With if you were to if you were to have gone into the start of January naming four players who wouldn't be here for the Swansea game, would those have been the four you'd have thought of, or would you have suggested perhaps one or two more might have been shown the door? No, um, I think um, those are th- those those players are all players that. Um, n- need game time really and were unlikely to get it um this season um obviously it makes sense that we haven't sold early and we haven't sold right given that they're very recent investments um so i think they they need to have a bit more game time um at a decent level um to uh prove themselves i guess um i think uh that uh you know early did play to play some uh games last season and was good in some and not so good in others um Tyreek Wright played weirdly at wing back most of last season when he did play um and I don't think that was his position at all this season obviously the the step up um has been tough for him and I don't think uh but I also still don't think that we've well, we've seen him a bit in the championship, but we, we didn't get an opportunity to see him last season um in in his in his in his actual position. So, you know, basically the League Two playing in your um in your correct position and then going straight to the championship basically is is a hell of a step up. So yeah, I think all of those players need some time to prove themselves and and hopefully can come back. Well, the, the two that have left out on loan can come back and 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 you know show you what they're made of. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say there there was other players that I would have liked to see leave the club. I would say that I wouldn't have minded Ben Wayne um, going out on loan also. However, given that we are probably not going to get a striker in in the next uh, two and a bit hours, then. You know, we need to keep him. Um, I'm sure we'll come on to that in a minute. But yeah, I'm I'm a bit at a loss as to why we are now in January and we still haven't found a striker. It's it's a good question. Harvey comes to you with that. Two transfer windows look like they might pass now since the end of last season, obviously the summer window and now this January transfer window where it looks on paper like we aren't going to sign an out and out striker. Um, it should be caveated by saying that obviously um, we've had two man- two managers in that time, Stephen Schumacher, sorry, a manager and a head coach, Stephen Schumacher and Ian Foster. Um, frustrating to to go two windows without signing a number nine, or is this just the the way that Argyle are going to go about it with a couple of number nines and a lot of number tens and attacking midfielders? Um, see, I, I see. I was just I was just thinking about that as well because. Um, I, I always thought we would get a get a striker in. We have been needing another striker, obviously. We've been with um Bundu playing a, um as an as a striker most of the time, but I think he's more of a winger than he is a striker. Ryan Hardy are one of our main strikers, really. And then Ben Wayne as well. But I honestly think that um I don't see Ben Wayne being um the proper striker um uh, in our team instead of Ryan Hardy, of course, who has been absolutely clinical since he's come back. But if I'm going to be honest, I'm very surprised we haven't signed another striker because we have been calling for an out-and-out striker for God knows how long. And it's a, it's a bit of a surprise. It is a bit of a surprise for me, really. But um, if we don't get one in, then I feel like it probably, we probably may end up getting one in the summer. Well, you'd, you'd certainly like to hope so. Um, Finn... You, you mentioned it yourself, though, the frustrations. If Femi Aziz does come in in the next, what, two hours and 16 minutes, um, would that sort of soften the blow for you that there isn't another number nine coming in the door or is it still going to be a frustration? You're on mute, Finn. You're on, You're on mute. mute. Sorry, yes. There uh, you go. Uh, yeah, certainly I think um, the, the striker is the main um, position that we need. I, I, I take Nick's point earlier that he spoke to Kevin Lansky and he says strikers are hard to get in. And I'm like, 
Yeah, but I, I, I refer back to the point that uh, we, we, Niall Ennis, last, uh, at the start of this, at uh, the start of the summer, was the first person that left the building uh, from that squad that got promoted. And that was literally a week after the season ended. So you cannot tell me that they haven't had enough time to go and find a find a find a striker in that window. And then they've also had another window. So I don't I don't feel too much sympathy in particular uh, for for them on that. I think it's it's, it's the one uh, area that we've kind of been crying out for because you know, we know Ryan Hardy's abilities. We know how good he he has been for us in the championship. But the guy. Not that Ben Wayne, of, of course they all do, but the guy literally runs his socks off every 90 minutes. And currently we haven't got enough quality off the bench for uh, to replace him because you can't ask Freddie, Freddie Osaka to, to play regularly because he's a 17-year-old with very limited football. Ben Wayne is not cut out yet for this level. And Mustafa Bundu obviously isn't seen as a striker by Ian Foster or the type of striker that he would like. So, uh, yeah, it's just, we're, again, I understand, you know, don't get anybody in for the sake of it, but you can't tell me we haven't had enough time to get somebody in because we've had whole two windows and we still haven't done it. So I don't feel too much sympathy with, with that point of view. On that, just to jump over you, John, I think the, pro- the problem you've got as well, though, Finn, is that, like, it seems like every single club in the Championship are struggling to get a striker and have been for a good 12 months. Oh God, look at me. I've got opinions. Um, but, um, you know, you look at like Ipswich, right? Who are, who are much higher than us in the pecking order. I feel yeah. like I'm paraphrasing somebody else's message in the group chat that you've already read, but like, you know, if they're, if they're looking, if they're swimming in the same pool as, as us and they're, they're pushing for the Premier League and, and they're linked to similar strikers that we are in, you know, that they've, they, even they've brought in a striker who's, you know, operates used to operating as a ten and, and just got shoved up front for uh, Wimbledon. You know, paying yeah, 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 yeah. The odds. like they're paying silly money for for a lad who um, I hope fails at this level, mainly because he's gone to Ipswich and he's come from <laughs> Wimbledon. Two clubs I absolutely despise. Um, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, no, I, I can't. I think that the one, the one player Nick's asked in the in the chat about like. Um, where is it here? Like he says, question to you all: uh, If you are in charge of recruitment and a striker is needed, he says sticker. And if I if I needed a sticker, Nick, I would go to PAFC Displays uh, and shop on your website. But he says, if you're in charge of recruitment and a striker is needed, who would you be looking at? I, I genuinely, even despite his, um, maybe this is a lazy answer because I got fans love going back to to old <laughs> players, and I'm sure we'll touch on it in a bit. Um, I, I would have I would have tempted the waters with with Ennis, to be honest, but again, it's whether we can keep him fit, which we we you, couldn't. So. You'd, have, you'd have you'd have tested the waters with a player who didn't sign a contract at the start of the season after we got yeah. promoted. Yeah, but sometimes they need that you know that kick up the ass to realise what they had, um, and I feel like he he may have um, he may have come back. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, as you as you were, Joe. Harvey, just quickly, um, obviously, we're going to have to say goodbye very soon. Um, yeah. Just looking ahead to the, the Swansea game. Um, obviously, we, we still don't know if there's going to be one more in the door. Um, is this going to be the first away win of the season? I think I think that's what um, everyone says. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I've, I've been saying it every, I've been saying it every week. But um, against Swansea, um, we want revenge. We lost at home part of the last game we played against them. Do I think we could win away from home? Um, I think I think it would be silly for me to uh, say no, but I, de- I do think we can. I do think we can beat them away from home, 100%. Um, they they have had a bit of a drop off Swansea, and uh, they have they haven't uh, been playing the best of football. Um, but for us as well, I think that Leeds game has gave us gave us a bit of positivity. Uh, obviously, it's in the cup, but um, away from home, it's given us a possibility that we can cause um we can cause problems to the ho- home opposition and uh, we can def and definitely show us that we can um we can get the win our first win this season i do think we can be um for sure yeah Harvey, um thanks uh, for jumping no on good work on the argyle way um and we'll catch up with you in the future cheers mate um delighted 
to welcome in Gab Sutton to an Argo right. live stream. It's it's a it's a turnaround from Argo Life appearing on a Gab Sutton live stream. Um, so Gab, welcome. Um, I know you've just done your League Two um, EFL debate. Um, start off with. <laughs> like, well, it was a long. Thankfully, it's a distant memory now. Um, just give us your overall outlook on Argyle's transfer window. In the top right, in a minute, it'll probably say six in, six out. Um, just how do you sum it up as a neutral, the business Argyle have done? Sure. Well, I think um, it's been quite an important transfer window because um, as I'm sort of searching 2023-24 Plymouth Argyle season to find the transfer activity to refresh my memory a little bit. Um, but I think... Um, yeah, you, you've obviously lost um, some some key players, I think, this January uh, in terms of the loans that uh, had been recalled. Uh, Finn Azaz and Luke Cundall have obviously gone to uh, to pastures new. But I think uh, you've got in Ashley Phillips um, an incredibly highly rated talent. I think in, in the four lads you've, you've brought in on loan, um, they've all got absolutely elite pedigree at youth level. And it's about how that translates naturally there is a little bit of a risk with that because neither of them are especially proven in senior football and coming into the championship um is obviously a bit of a risk but i think that uh, with a coach like ian foster who i'd imagine has worked with all four of them or is certainly somebody that all four of them would be aware of um i think that makes that process a bit easier and has probably helped as well um get some of those deals over the line um but then i like the signing of um adam Forshaw to provide that little bit of experience and championship know-how um as well and matthew sorinola's a wing back that i've been um i was a big admirer of when he was at mk don so um yeah i think it's been a challenging window um but uh, ultimately um i think a positive one as well yeah i mean obviously we were just touching on it there with harvey that to replace somebody like a finn as is, is is always going to be a tough thing to do in the transfer window even though it happens so early um you know i'm not going to sit here and try and say that alfie divine is going to be the new finn as but what did you see in his time at port vale that makes you think that certainly in the short term between now and the summer that he can be the man just to keep things ticking over alongside Whitaker and in behind Harvey Hardy because it seems it seems to be that Alfie Devine is going to be the man who's going to be that go-to number ten in in with those two. Uh, well, first of all, I like to keep my eggs in the fridge. I, I like them nice and cold. Um, I think <laughs> in terms of um, Alfie Devine. I, I don't, I've not really seen an awful lot of him at um, at Port Vale. I wouldn't say he was necessarily one of their star performers in the first half of the season. So I would maybe say that this loan is largely to do with his pedigree at youth level and um, and the fact that Ian Foster's worked with him closely and, and rates his talent so highly. That's not to say that he had a bad loan at Port Vale. It was just kind of him finding his feet a little bit in senior football. Um, I can't say with enormous confidence that he is going to straight away replace Finn as, as although there was one of the home games um, where he set up, uh, I think it might have been Ryan Hardy's first goal, um, where um, it was a lovely bit of play down the left and he sort of squared it quite nicely. So he's already up and running in that sense. Um, but obviously Finn as, as is a bit further along maybe in, in his development. Um, but I would also maybe argue that um, that Alfie Devine probably has a higher long-term ceiling. So um, would you have chosen to lose Finn as, as? No. Um, but hopefully Alfie Devine can settle in once um, with the benefit of working with um somebody like Ian Foster. Um obviously today, or not today, in the last couple of days there's been a couple of outgoings from the side, both to Wick and Wanderers, incidentally. Mm -hmm. Um Matt Butcher leaving yesterday and obviously this evening, just a matter of what half hour, 45 minutes ago, Saxon Early um has also become a chair boy for the next six months. Um obviously Butcher signed a, a, a longer deal. Um Good signings for Wickham and and just what did you, you know, for Sa in particular Saxon early, obviously, mm. you know, I think it's only nine appearances in total last season, obviously just the one in the league this year at Watford, albeit it was a man of the match performance at Watford. Um, how vital is that spell at, at, at Wickham going to be for his development? And also is Wickham the right club for him to go and get game time given their precarious run of form that they've been on of late 
Well, Wickham Wanderers came to Home Park to um, get under your skin um, and uh, and take two of your players, and they did it, and they won. Um, <laughs> no, I think um, <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, it's. Um, uh, I think Matt Butch is a great signing for Wickham, first of all, in, in League One, because he's so consistent at that up in, league, in League One, isn't he? And then I think Saxon Erle, um maybe not going to be quite technical enough for what Ian Foster wants. And I think the fact that he's brought in two left wing backs, I believe it is, um, in uh, Lino and Lino Souza and Matthew Sorinola, that would suggest that he sort of slipped down the packing order. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me, actually, if um, his loan to Wickham was successful, um, that that one actually became a permanent deal. Because um, I, I think Ian Foster will probably um, maybe have his have his eye on maybe um, a higher pedigree um, type of player at youth level, especially in those wing-back positions. Um, you, do you know much about um, Lionel Sousa, Gab? Because, no, um, I've, from what I've we... literally never heard of him before. I, you know, <laughs> I thought I thought you'd heard of everybody who's in in and around these lower leagues, Gab. You know, come <laughs> on, we we were we were relying on you in the absence of an Arsenal fan amongst us. <laughs> Do you know what I think? Um, in terms of players that have proved themselves in the EFL, I'm pretty knowledgeable. When it comes to Premier League, National League, or the youth scene, um, or anywhere across Europe, um, um, my memory is patchy at best. So um, I, I'm afraid you'll have to source outsource your um. Get your knowledge online this season. One, um, yeah. one more Argyle question before we come to a broader um, championship question, which we'll get Finn's thoughts on as well. But one more Argyle question. It, it's on the comment that's on the screen now. Is keeping Morgan Whitaker the most important bit of business that Argyle have done in January? And just how highly do you rate Whitaker in terms of the attacking midfielders in the championship? Well, well, my belief that for sustained progress, you absolutely want to lose your best players and sort of cash in on them. Although, uh, I suppose in your case, uh, you, 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 uh, they're on loan players that you've lost. So, um, but um, the, the point being, you don't want to lose them all in in one go. So you can lose, you know, a couple of key players and you can replace them. Especially if you've got a really good recruitment team, but you don't want to push it to the max where you've got too many players, too many unknown quantities coming in a new one who can keep doing the business and be that, you know, one to rely on while you're sort of working yourselves out a little bit. Um, so I think keeping hold of Morgan Whitaker is going to be uh, going to be crucial to that. Um, and listen, he's, he's quick, isn't he? He's agile. He loves to turn a snapshot and he's been in phenomenal form um, this season. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that's going to be huge. Um I've I've only got one more thing that that's pressing in my mind to ask you, Gab. I don't know whether, what Aaron's got up his sleeve for the remaining time that we've got you with us. Um, the championship as a whole, um, obviously we're, we're green tinted people on here this evening. So we brought you in for a bit of neutrality across the net for the rest of the evening. Um, on the whole across the championship, who do you think's had the best and worst window? Um, obviously Ooh. there's been a lot of praise online for Hull's transfer business. I think they've knocked it out of the park. Um, in, for me, but who who would you rank as the best and worst window for the clubs in the championship? I, I would have to agree with Hull because um, I think the signings of Fabio Carvalho and Ryan Giles massively improved them, uh, and I do see Hull getting into the top six. Um, in terms of worst, I would maybe go for um, Sheffield Wednesday um, because I feel like they've not really strengthened their squad in the areas and in the way that I think was maybe being hoped. Um, so, yeah, I would probably go with Hull having had the best window and maybe Sheffield Wednesday the worst. Lovely. Um, Gab, as always, um, I don't know if Aaron, have you got anything um, up your sleeve? I know we, we've not compared questions across the evening, so I don't know if you've anything yourself. Joe, if you think that I've planned questions, you are uh, very much mistaken. I think uh, the only real one is obviously a lot of people are mentioning the fact that we, we haven't brought in a in a striker. Gab, you seem to know the EFL uh, like the back of your hand. Um, just just who who do you feel that we could or should bring in um, that would that would a complement us and b is actually realistic. 
Um, well, uh, remind me of your state of play um, in terms of that, because you've got Ryan Hardy there, you've got Mustafa Bundu, and you've got Ben Wayne. Ben Wayne. And yeah. I imagine that the feeling is that while well, Hardy's been brilliant, Ben Wayne struggled with the physicality and Bundu's a bit raw for the level. So if Hardy got mm. injured, you, you, you'd be having trouble. Um, yeah, it, in terms of... Um, um, yeah, in terms of options, I think Devante Cole at Barnsley um, would be um, would be a great signing just to bring a bit of a bit more firepower, um, and uh, I would certainly like the idea of that. But I also feel like um, Ian Foster seems to want to uh, invest in assets um, and maybe go for a younger profile of players. So, you know, I could I could talk, we could talk about um, the likes of. Macaulay Langstaff, for example, at Notts County. Um, but I don't know that I could see uh, Argyle paying the £2 million that it would take to get um, a 26-year-old from League Two. So um, for me, I think it's a, it's going to be a difficult one. I'm not sure there's, they're going to bring in another striker. Um, and to be honest, I'd expect a lot of the recruitment to be, yes, yeah, sort of under-21s pickups and, uh, and loans. Just, just, just very one, quickly. Yeah, go on. Um, I, think, I think I, think I might... Good. Yeah, I think I might be able to ask the same question Aaron was going to ask. There's been a lot of talk, particularly in the last couple of hours, that Argyle are working to get a deal done for Femi Aziz um, from Reading. Um, the latest update we had just after we came on from a Reading um, journal was that a deal hadn't been agreed, but Argyle were working hard to get one. Um, Femi Aziz, how would he... From you know, if you know what he's capable of and things, just how would he complement the uh, the squad that Argyle have got at the moment? Yeah, he's a um, quick, versatile, wide player, very energetic, and he's capable of spectacular as well. So certainly somebody I could see um, developing, and certainly I think the the situation Reading are in, where there's very much a um, a, a sort of disconnect between the ownership and the um, and the management. So um, that's something that you know you never like to see in football, but it's probably something that Argyle you know might work from Argyle on paper. Um, yeah, so I think he would definitely come in and, and improve, and I think he could play uh, a variety of positions. Maybe come in as a as a as an option at right wing back, or possibly in one of the forward positions as well. So um, yeah, I could see I could see that being a good signing. Yeah, um, absolute pleasure as always to get you on. You're getting a lot of love from the, the Green Army via the comments. Um, so we'll have to make sure that we try and get you on to another one of the streams. That's um, very good. Later on in the season. Um, thanks for coming on, mate. Have a good night. Cheers, folks. All the best. Cheers, Gab. Cheers, Gab. I think um, that's also where we say goodbye to Finn as well. Um, it's past your bedtime, Finn. So, like... Yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the transfer windows are tiring me. Uh, this transfer window has tired me out. <laughs> but cheers for jumping on, mate. See you soon. Cheers, thank you. Okay, a little deadline deal, deadline day deal of our own, swapping out Finn and Gab for Graham and Ben. I don't know uh, which two I'd prefer up top in the four four two. Um, yeah, how are you both? Uh, start with you, Ben. You good? Yeah, good. Thank you. Looks like um, Morgan Whitaker is staying. That is probably the, uh, has been discussed, best bit of business we could have got done this window. Probably the most promising uh, signing, as it were. Um, so um, the rest is, you know, we'll see the fruits of that labour later, won't we? We'll see if that's been enough. If we're if we're a general upgrade over what we were at the start of the window or not, as uh, the season plays out. But you know, promising. But yeah, if Whitaker stays. I am good. And like Adam Forshaw, uh, to to surrounded by uh, inexperienced youngsters, Graham, <laughs> how's things? Well, I'll take that as a fine compliment. Uh, if I play as well as Adam played for the second half against Cardiff, I'll be well pleased. So, uh, um, as for Morgan Whitaker staying, brilliant news. Um, the club seemed to be confident that he was going to, and. Lazio clearly didn't offer anywhere near enough cash to even tempt us, so uh, which is great news. I mean, if he goes in the summer, that's much better for the club because we've got a whole season in which to spend the money should they choose to do so um, in either players or investing in the ground. Um, 
window wise I, I think this is must be the busiest ever isn't it isn't it 14 in and out so far i think so it's 12 like 12 isn't it six in six out one looks uh likely oh no i suppose it's saxon and then saxon's gone and Matt, i yeah. think it is saxon would be 13 yeah yeah, yeah. so and lucky um, for some, but not yeah so us. brilliant and are we better at the end of it than at the beginning? I, th I think we are overall as a team, for sure. Obviously, Finazar's going was a big loss, but I think we've replaced Kandal effectively with uh, Divine. And um, Ashley Phillips, I think, is a future England international in the making. And the one that really excites me, because I did actually a little bit of homework on him before coming on, is Femi, Femi Aziz. Um, sometimes you see a show reel and you think, oh, God, you know, it's, is that the best they can do? But he's scored five goals in the last seven or eight games. And my word, if you think Morgan Woods' goals were good, his goals are on a par. But he's good with his left, he's good with his right, he's quick. Um, he reminds me of Elise of Palace, same sort of stature. And if we bought him or signed him on a free or whatever, we may have some really good player there. I'm really excited by him. I'm, you know, I'm quite mellow in it. I've seen it all before type of thing. But I thought, crikey, this guy's got something about him. Um, it does seem like he's doing all of his good work in the last few weeks, doesn't it? As if the window yeah. is open, I've got, to, I've got to put on a show to, to see if I can get out of here sort of job. I'm not suggesting that that's what he's trying to do at Reading. But we obviously know the situation they're in, um, and he's certainly stepped up in in recent weeks for them, isn't he? Yeah, but I mean, the goals he scored—they're all up, nearly all of them are outside the box, and good for us. He scored the winner against Exeter throw on New Year's Day, of course, which was an absolute corker in the top corner. So he's already a folk hero if we've uh, signed him. So uh, I'm, I think that's a great bit of business if we have. And it, if we haven't paid a fee for him, we haven't paid a, any money for any of our signings at all this window, which is pretty good business by any standards. Um, I'm going to kick it off to the pair of you with a question that came in a little bit earlier. Um, we will be keeping some questions that come in to, to ask the, the panel as the night goes on. This one came in from Louis Walker, who says, interesting to see if we're still using data as key to sign players considering Sorinola, Forshaw and Phillips not played much this season to generate data off? Or are we? have we changed the policy up? Um, I value both of your opinions on this. Ben, you're, we know that you're big on the on the data as we, we came to blows about the other week. And, and Graham, you, as you mentioned, you've, you've seen it all in terms of transfer windows and you've certainly seen a lot more, unfortunately, than the rest of us. Um, do you think this has been a change of tack policy-wise in the transfer window, or is it just horses for courses, Fozzie getting some players he can rely on as quick as he can? I'd suggest that unless there's been a significant injury between their last regular play and them coming in, that you could base, to a certain degree, a lot of your decisions on what they were producing when they last played. Because that you you know unless there's been an injury that's going to change sort of their output significantly they'll put they're still the same player and will play you imagine the same sort of way so uh, players don't suddenly just stop you know utilizing the attributes that they've developed over the years because they've they've not played for a few months so i imagine that the data that they'll have looked at for those players will be the the data from from when they've last last played and that will be what they've if they've used data which i imagine they still are i don't imagine that the club has completely change tack um i think that that will be what they've used to to, to draw their conclusions from um we we kind of know that that's the case because um they were taught the club or um foster said the club had been looking at phillips just like he had been uh, or he'd been considering him now whether that was because foster was looking at data or that's because just his eye you know he goes by his eye and he knows the the traits and the behaviors that he has and that just happened to marry up with what the club had looked at um we don't necessarily know but the club had already you know the, the the club hadn't had any necessarily any inside track to phillips unless it was through um jews nips contacts at the and his experience in in the england setup so um they hadn't you that that wasn't because of um 
fosters contact sort of like just getting in calling in old favors that was obviously something that the club had 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 been working on it had assessed and and run the numbers on so i'd yes there may be something of um foster having an input and sort of suggesting like these are some of the players that i've worked with and i can vouch for their character on top of the data that's been looked at but i would i would suspect that the considering how well it's worked you know and it has worked in the vast majority of well maybe not vast majority but certainly in the majority of cases the the data analysis has worked for the recruitment team thus far in the you know in, in, in sort of the the previous um few seasons then you'd suggest they wouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater just because a new manager came in and i'd also suggest that he seems like a very scientifically minded man someone who'd be quite willing to to lean on that model too in his recruitment so I think that there's probably still a lot of the data analysis going on uh, in the recruitment um, uh, process. Um, how, how much influence Foster has, I don't know. But as he's come in as a head coach uh, rather than a manager, you imagine that that recruitment um, process is, has gone even more towards the the recruitment team and the, the director of football than than for Foster himself. So I I, I think that who the people who have come in are actually the sort of people that data would suggest we needed people to cut out the defensive errors people who will cut out the who who, who will be busy in the midfield for example like jb and, and um for sure people who will close those passing lanes and and those direct runs that have been killing us into the box so um whether there's been an involvement of of foster's sort of contact book i don't know um, but I, I certainly don't think that the club's abandoned its data-based approach to to um, recruitment. Graham? Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think data has backed up most of the signings we've made. Um, Divine would have been one. Ashley Phillips certainly would have been one. And Aziz, if he comes, would definitely be one. The only one that doesn't quite fit into the data in some ways is obviously Adam Forshaw. But he obviously wanted somebody with knowledge, experience, nous to sort of um, pull the strings in the midfield when things get difficult. And Adam Forshaw did that with a plum in the second half against Cardiff. And I, I thought was very, very effective, played it simple, was pushing and pulling the midfield around. And as, as, as we said, closing the gaps, we, we looked. That second half, I thought, was one of the best halves of uh, that I've seen this season. We pressed high and um, one of the most encouraging things was that we uh, hunted in packs like you see Man City do, you know, three or four surrounding the play of the ball. The ball recovery was brilliant. And when we got it, we moved it at pace. And if you look at the third goal, Morgan Whitaker scored, probably never a better team goal that we scored all season. That came from Phillips pushing up stepping up as Foster obviously wants him to do. A nice pass to Morgan Whitaker, then out to the left, Ryan um, Hardy, and a splendid finish. I mean, that goal, the more you look at it, it was the epitome of, I think, of how Foster wants to play. And, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about the second half of the season. I think we look more solid and... Um, we're going to get that away win, and hopefully, I think we're going to get it on Saturday. And, and if you look at the data on for sure, although not many things jump out, I think is I think is ball retention um, under um, you know being challenged or whatever is incredible. So um, he's very good at receiving the ball under pressure. And I think we saw that in the second half as well, where he, he was dogged and he was quite capable of just turning and turning until yeah. he, he, he tired the man or had found you know that the man had, had, had backed off. So that's going to be crucial, whereas we were losing the ball in those areas and being broken on. So, again, it's sort of like it's finding the right shape peg for the hole that you've got. You don't, I said it about Dan Scar, if him playing in a three, it's like, it doesn't matter if he doesn't play well in a two, if you're playing him in a three. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if Forshaw's limited in, in his abilities or his age or, or whatever it might be. If he does the job that you need him to do in the midfield, if he has a specific skill set that fits the role that you need. And I think that's probably what the data, what popped off the, off the page when looking at the data is this guy would be very good retaining the ball um, and getting us out of trouble when the press comes much the way Bali Mumba did for, for quite a bit of the season on the left, it, um, the ball would often be given out to him and 
he would ease the press because he'd turn his man, he'd do a little bit of tricks, we'd run inside and then all of a sudden everyone had to back off because he'd beaten his man and you had to see the space. Whereas he can do it now in the build up, right from the from the from the the pivot um in front of the the back back five. So I think, you know, even though that's a very small role overall in the team, it could be a very crucial role. So yeah, I mean data, there's no reason that data couldn't have been used to sort of highlight or you know, um to to um, pick up on those traits and that could be you know that's a very small skill set but crucial to the way the team's going to play I, I was quite struck and not many people picked it up that um you know foster said that he spent two hours with adam forshaw friday afternoon telling him how he wanted him to play i thought two hours that is some preparation some insight and the one thing I do sense, I mean, when when, the when team, speak a lot faster as well. Yeah, <laughs> when when the team uh, couldn't play on the um, hard frozen surface, they went down to um, Salt Mill at Salt Ash, and some of the people watching Foster's coaching for two hours on on the press and the shape and the organisation shows that he, he he's trying to close those gaps as you say stop the runs through and we look a better more resourceful team for doing so as long as it doesn't take too much of our attacking edge but if we can transition the way we did second half in against cardiff then um it, it's promising and, and the signings i mean it's um i mean he's quite a character quite a bouncy sort of character i think he's going to add some uh, um interesting um celebrations if he if he ever scores that's for sure but um no I, I i'm very positive about what's happened and just out of interest how many signings have stoke made this window <laughs> well they might be about to make one very soon they're pushing hard to bring niall ennis in um which is an interesting one oh. um obviously shuey's shuey's worked him here but i'm not totally sure he's the the second coming for them and the saviour to their problems. No. Um, it's an interesting one you mentioned, Graham, that you, you're happy with with obviously the window. Obviously, as you say earlier, it's been pretty hectic. Um, we, we've done well to, to recruit the quality of players I think we have in the short turnaround in between the change of, of managers slash head coach. This is going to be, the, it looks, unless something dramatic happens in the next hour and 45, it looks like it will be the second transfer window where we don't sign an out-and-out out number nine. Because um, I think we're we're sort of done with the argument now that the Moose is a is a striker. I think we can all see he's, he's better as an attacking winger. Um, how much of a frustration is that? Or, as I mentioned earlier to, to Harvey, is it just the way that, you know, we're just going to operate now where we, we go with limited nines and a lot of tens? Well, I think, again, Ian Foster said about how he wants Ryan Hardy to play, and I think Ryan alluded it to in the interview. Quite a lot of championship sides play a high line, and he wants Ryan Hardy to run beyond it and behind it, which he's doing very effectively, and he enjoys that role. So the traditional Cosgrove, if you like, big hold-up man and play off in times of trouble – doesn't seem to be the route that we're going to go. So if Hardy get, gets injured, interesting, he brought Ben Wayne on instead of um, the Moose. But um, I think the Moose could do that role. But I think Morgan Whitaker can, if he can run run beyond the defence. That's the way we play, play it out wide. The two tens, very effective. I'm not sure we're missing an out-and-out -out striker. Not because... because where are we in the scoring charts? How many goals we scored? <laughs> and yeah, I mean, somebody... we're averaging two goals a game, aren't we? Yeah, that's, so that's the thing, what's so... the problem? You know, the, the old school, traditional big man up front days have, have, have largely gone. Yes, we could have bought one as an option, but how much game time would he have got realistically, given the way we play, given the pace that we transition and move and I think the way it seems, I mean, I, I was quite surprised that the players have said how much it's um, changing because I thought it would be largely the sort of 3 4 3 that, or 3 4 2 1 that Shuey played last season. But it seems to be different because he wants his 
in his press conference today, he said he wants his two central midfielders to run forward. And that's what Adam Randall did to score against Leeds. He ran a really long way. And that's what he's encouraging, as long as he said he's got one to lock it at the back. So, you know, we're at the start of the, the era, but I think we're going to be looking a lot a better side for it in the long run, for sure. Ben, um, Stevie Vaughan has said on YouTube, if we beat Leeds in the replay, we're changing over from the deadline day just for just for a little bit, because we do, you know, we do have quite a few games coming up and and this this message here says it now. If we beat Leeds in the replay, it's eleven matches in thirty three days. Um, yeah. I mean, I might I might get tired just watching the ninety minutes, let alone having to to run out there and and play it. Um, just how much of, a, of an issue could that turn out to be? Or with a new manager coming in and the positive start that he's had with two wins and two draws in all competitions, is it a good thing that? You know, it's just Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, the roadshow rumbles on and, you know, they're just in a rhythm. I think that's that's true for a lot of the side. I do. And just ironically, given your last question, I think it's the nine that is the worry. We saw how tired Hardy was at the end of that that spectacular game he played. And obviously he gave everything, but he can't do that every, what is it? Is, is it? Is it 11 games in 33 days? That's literally one game every three days on average, isn't it? And he can't do that, even if he's got um, Bundu or Wayne coming in, not to a consistent level. And like I said in the um, the Leeds review, he did look tired against Leeds. Now, I, I did credit Leeds with doing an excellent job on him. Um, they sort of shut down the spaces for him. Um, but he, give, it's, over that month, he's gonna he's surely going to struggle. Um, and we, we... So I... <clears throat> I feel like there needs to be a plan B in place if we've not got another striker coming in or um, if Wayne can't, you know, for all we know, Ben Wayne's brilliant at doing what Foster's going to ask him to do. And we just haven't seen it yet. He hasn't been asked to do it before. Um, I don't necessarily credit that, but you know, it could well happen. It could be that Mustafa Bundu suddenly shown that he's picked it up in training and he, he does what's needed. The difference between, I think the key difference between Wayne and, um, and Bundu and, uh, sorry, between um, Hardy and Wayne and Bundu is that he wins 40% of his aerial duels and the other two um, wins close to 33%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's an extra one in six that he's picking up. And although, you know, sort of the, the long ball stuff has been criticised, the pinging it out to, to the striker, what it does allow the team to do is get back into its defensive shape to transition back to pushing up high. You kick the ball out and all of a sudden those two banks that have, have flexed, those two sort of, uh, concentric semicircles that we seem to build that are flex. You kick the ball out and all of a sudden you can push push back another 15, 20 yards. Um and, and if the if the striker can hold it up and the number nine can hold it even better, you've also you've got then got the opportunity to counter. Um and those those two don't necessarily do that. So if they if they're not going to be able to hold the ball in the same way that Hardy's been able to thus far in the couple of games he's had, we're going to need an, an alternative like Graham suggests where we're we're got maybe two men up front where we're getting them to run between the fullbacks slash wing backs and the center backs or um you know bending runs so that we're 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 able to play through balls more than than the than the long balls because we need an alternative to be able to get us out when we're trying to build up and we come under pressure if we haven't been able to escape it through the skills of foreshore or or mumba etc so um will the team be tired the first question yes to a degree, but I do think for a lot of the players who haven't played for a while, for those that are, you know, sort of coming in um, like um, Phillips and Jabe, etc., they're not going to have a problem, are they? Because they've not had any game time. If anything, you know, to begin with, they might be a bit stiff after a uh, <laughs> pause. They might be a little tired after a few of the games, um, but they'll, as, as young guys, you can imagine then their fitness will pick up quite quickly. Um, maybe some of the guys who've played the whole season, it might be a bit different, but then, you know, there's not many you know the defenders etc they don't tend to get quite the same legginess in this sort of system i imagine you know three at the back with the wing backs it'll be the wing backs we maybe need to worry about so i, I do think that the team will probably be all right we've certainly i feel got more squad depth now than we did at the start of the the window so i actually think with a bit of rotation with 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 fozzy being able to see the traits of the players that he's got in this squad that he's inherited whether they can adapt his methodology and he can trust more in Randall, et cetera, to, 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 to adapt to his game, then we should be able to rotate fine. It's the, it's the nine where I worry 
that we might get tired um and that can be, we can, that can be solved either one of two ways like i say we we managed to bring in someone who can who can play much like hardy as in do a reasonable job of holding the ball up plus do all the running in behind and being the trigger for the press cuz he said as as um, the manager sorry as as the head coach that he's the, the key for the press so you need someone with the intelligence and the ability to do that as well as be an outlet or if we don't get an alternative in then we need that plan b to be able to 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 change it up so that we don't get stuck in um when we come under pressure during during that that sort of period of patient build up that we try to have so um yeah i think i don't think it will be that big a problem this run of games i think it'll actually be good to 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 get everybody together on the same page quite quickly um it's just that you know with with the striker and or you know if if Hardy gets tired or even worse if he gets injured we need to foster needs to have something an alternative there that's going to going to help us get out against the better teams against the teams that are going to you know uh, press us in um Rory uh, tongue and cheek just saying that our views are holding up quite well, even though we're competing with the Apprentice and Love Island. Um, <laughs> I think. Well, I know who I I'd think be I know. Watching, which, yeah. yeah, I think I know which program the four of us are more likely to be on out of the two. Um, Graham, eleven games in thirty-three days. Obviously, a lot's made um, at higher levels than the Championship about game time and workload for players and some of the elite clubs who have all this infinite wealth and fantastic facilities seem to be the ones who moan about it um how much of a problem do you see the squad depth being over even if it, even if we don't beat um leads in the replay there's still going to be a lot of games in february um just how do you see the squad coping in the short term with that well, <clears throat> rotation is going to be everything for a start but if you look at what we've got we sort of almost two two players for every place, if you count Wayne for Hardy. Um, we've got two of the, the two longest away trips in those 11 days as well at um, Sunderland and Middlesbrough. So I assume we're going to be flying up and hopefully flying back like we did for Leeds. So that shouldn't be too bad. We've got three home games in eight days. So the travelling aspect, I, I think it's not going to have too much of an impact, which it would do otherwise. Um, as it's going to be down to rotation and we've got enough players to do it. But as everyone said, Hardy's the fulcrum, he's the main man um, for the system. He's pressing from the front. If he's not playing, who's going to do it? Um, is Ben Wayne up to it? We don't know, but his running style and pressing style might bring rewards for them number of minutes he's played his goal scoring record actually isn't isn't that bad it's better than better than most um if freddy Asaka, i think has got a role to play particularly coming on late in games coming in off the left um so it's going to be hard and it's going to be season defining because if we i mean if we can beat leeds we've got chelsea or villa which is going to be a big cup game um gonna be a lot of money coming in so it's a it's a big month and um but we're pretty good at home and there's only two teams that have done us at home really um but i think we we're, we're not open to that sort of game anymore so i'm, I'm confident that we're going to get enough points there's going to be a dip in form and dipping performances because we can't keep playing the, the way we have but one of the things that nobody's actually mentioned is our physicality as a team's improved. Our height as a team is massively improved. I think Aziz is six foot um, and um, Lino is six foot as well. So every apart from uh, Sorinola, everyone's been six foot or there or more, which um, I think is something that we needed. And um, but it's going to be a tough ask. I mean, I'd be interested to know if any other teams are playing eleven games in or potentially 11 games in 33 days i doubt it but how many of those are at home quite a few aren't they yeah there there are a few i think we've only got to, what we've got to do we've got to do swansea sunderland and middlesbrough. middlesbrough and i think sheffield wednesday might be the last one in that i think after the ipswich game i think we got a hillsborough on a midweek well, no, evening oh, that's a midweek game in the wednesday so. yeah so i mean we 
there's there's four pr three pretty long trips in there as well so there's there's plenty to contend with um one comment that's just come in there from uh superintendent says any more business tonight for argyle femi as east question mark um the last update we had from the reading um side of things were that um we were still trying to get a deal um we were working hard to get something in place for femi aziz but at the mo at, at that point a deal hadn't been agreed um you do wonder with just 90 minutes to go um as the referee prepares to blow the whistle to start the 90 minutes of the transfer window whether or not um time has run out um We've seen, obviously, the uh, forget the lone players being recalled because ultimately there's no real power that the club possess for that. Matt Butcher to Wickham on a free transfer. Tariq Wright's gone out on loan. Saxon Early's obviously gone out on loan this evening to, to Wickham Wanderers. And the fourth one was Macaulay Gillespie um, going to Charlton. Uh, get both your thoughts, really, on those four. Um any of them particularly surprising out of the four or were they all fairly expected perhaps macaulay gillespie um going and I, I mean uh, the rumors are for it, something like between two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. well that's a offer you couldn't really turn down for a player who i think only played a relative handful of games um the other three saxon early um it's just a shame he got injured because anybody seeing him at Watford would think we had a player on our hands there. He had a really stunning game away at Watford. Um, but playing at Wickham, if he can get sufficient game time, he comes back <clears throat> for the new season, really stake his claim. So I think that's a good move. Tariq Wright, um, the same. Um, I'm not sure he was quite good enough, but he should have been. I mean, he has a great crossing ability, but I think um, effort-wise, people will question whether <clears throat> he, he made the grade. And certainly with Foster raising the tempo of the team and the pressing and everything, that's a vital cog in the wheel. So uh, uh, Matt Butcher, great servant, reminded me a bit of Steve Adams, sort of fits in here and there, gets, doesn't, you know, notice what he does, but Ultimately, I don't think he had the pace for the championship. Um, but <clears throat> great servant, did well, apart from the back pass at Wembley. Um, um, so good luck to him at Wickham and I wish him well. Dan? Yeah, very similar. The the one that maybe I, I thought might have, um, the, the thoughts might have changed on is Butcher, given that, and it's not, I'm not just basing it on that performance against Leeds, but talking about Forshaw and his very specific skill set, where the butcher actually could slot into that role. He, you know, he's not ne you know, necessarily got the widest um, or the most flexible of skill sets. He's not the most athletic, let's say, but he, he demonstrated that sort of awareness and ability to sort of use his physicality to keep hold of the ball and the vision to to do things like like he could have been a, an understudy to Forshaw in in that role. However. We do have the depth there. Um, you know, he, he effectively, I think it was, was it you, Joe, who suggested he was sixth choice um, for that game, effectively, given. Oh, Sam, was... I, I, don't want, I don't want my name associated with that. I think that was a Sam Down comment. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but yes, somebody I thought was quite astute in suggesting on the, on the Leeds review that if you think about the two guys who started after only being here for a couple of days, clearly are the first choice. And then he was willing to start Caleb Roberts over him. Maybe that was just one of those games where you have a one of those games and it comes off. Um, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe all of the wheels were in motion. Maybe they'd already had the discussions. Butcher said, I want to go and play full time. And they said, yep, yeah, you know, you've been a, a, a great servant and we'll, we'll help you to do that before that had happened. And you, once things are in motion, it's hard to put the brakes on. Um, so, you know, we'll never know. And I don't think it's ultimately a massive loss, but I do think he could have substituted for, for for sure um at times but you know it, he's at a top period in his career where he probably wants to just go and play sort of think of wilson who you know in the summer he went he wanted to just you know he'd, he'd rather be be playing and making a career than sort of thinking of be about being a bench player um or a bit part player in a squad at a higher level some people don't mind that waiting for their opportunity and some people rather go and play so i don't think any of them are surprising 
um, really, given the, the the other business that's gone on in the window. Tyreek Wright, I think there's a player in there. I think that um, his head hasn't been right for a long time as much as anything else. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything surprising. And Saxon Elliott, exactly like Graham said, you know, he looked brilliant. I mentioned it on one of the previous pods many, many um, weeks ago that when, when Schumacher had a bit of a wry smile talking about early that I think he might have been more key to plans than we'd maybe realised um, And when he got that injury. And he needs to get proper minutes in the leg because, uh, yes, he's probably got back to sort of cardiovascular fitness and he strengthened his, his leg up over the months he's been rehabbing. But there's a difference, isn't there, between the sort of the the, the contact and, and the sort of like the, the torsion that you put your your joints under when you're in a in a full contact match than there is in in training. So he he needs that and he'll get that at Wickham. They're in a in a spot of bother and they'll they'll have no qualms in in you know ringing every drop out of him. So yeah, I think that that's a good move. Sad that he couldn't um, get that here, but there's no way we could risk sort of giving him the game time when we're in the position we're in. We want to get as many points on the board as quickly as possible. So yeah, sad state of affairs, but it's it's the the logical um, the logical course. So yeah, they, they, they all make sense, and especially when you're considering the amount of wages we're bringing on. You imagine that even though we're paying bit parts for the wages of some of these guys, we're still probably pay, paying a good chunk more in wages now than we were at the start of the season. So in effect, the, you know, whether, even if we wanted to keep some of these players, getting the wages off the book, you imagine most of it's being covered by the the clubs they've gone to. Um, the the loans that is obviously the, the permanents are um then you know it, it, it makes sense for the sake of the books as well so yeah i don't think there's anything that we can cry about um i think it's been really really good business all round by by the club so far um i'm going to bring aaron back in shortly um aaron can do some hosting duty um which he did agree to at the start of the evening um graham um there was obviously the talk um in the last what day two days that lazio of all clubs um were going to be the ones who would actually table a bid there's been talk all window of brentford and fulham and clubs like west ham showing an interest in in morgan whitaker it was lazio who came forward with a and it should be pointed out it is only a rumored um 10 million euros bid um that's the only figure i've seen thrown around um 10 million euros bid, which um, Neil Jusnip says was immediately rejected after an internal discussion and conversations with the players' representatives. I'd imagine Morgan was um, asked about it as well. Um, first of all, 10 million euros is, is a testing the water bid, would you say? Or would you say that was about as serious as Lazio were ever going to get? Well, I think they would. They seem to be looking on... Uh, for like, did they not bid for Clark of Sunderland and Rowan Norwich and Ryan Kent of Fenerbahce? I they think got they ended Kent up in the end, I think. So, I mean, clearly they were looking for value, but I mean, I, I, I hope Morgan goes on and gets his 20 goals for the season. I hope, particularly Tuesday night on BBC One, he smashes it for the football world to see what we have um i'm pragmatic i think if if we get 15 million plus offer in the summer when clubs have gone through this this, this profit and sustainability issue at, in the premiership um he that's the time we might consider it him to, to sell him um, because he might have, he might not be able to replicate the season he's had this season, his value would decline. So, I think end of season his value will be probably the peak. Um, but he what may be. Do you see, what do you see his year. value at? Well, I, I I just look at Adam Scott, who went from Bristol City to Bournemouth, twenty five million, um, and he was, um, I think he might even have been in. The, I think he was two years below in the England set up than, than Morgan. And yeah, he's a good player, but I'm thinking, is is he 25 million? And if he is, then that's a benchmark we should be looking at. So, um, I mean, 15 would be now, 20 would be the end of summer. And if he has another good season 
or part season next year, it's going to be more because clubs want a player that can score and particularly to score from outside the area, which is quite a skill that not many people have. So I, 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 I yeah, it's, there haven't been any real big money signings from championship into the premiership this window. I don't think any, I don't think. Um, but in the summer there will be, um, and Morgan may be, may well be one of them. I think the um, I think the comparison was on Sky Sports and uh, Talk Sport um, was that last January eight over eight hundred million was spent in the Premier League, and this year before today um, coming in today, I think it was only sitting at about oh, only sitting at about fifty five million, yeah. um, which shows a, a significant drop off. Um, ben, one for you. Um, I hope you have done your homework before coming on to the live stream this evening. Um, do you have any one. idea? <laughs> do you have any idea? Um, looking in from the outside, obviously we, Graham's tongue and cheek reference to what Stoke have done in the business. Obviously, Birmingham signed Alex Pritchard today, and they've got a couple of other others in the door. Sheffield Wednesday have been a bit quiet. QPR in the last half hour have confirmed the signing of Isaac Hayden on loan from Newcastle. Do you remember when we were once linked with him? Yeah. Um, how does our window, do you think, compare to some of those that are around us? I think pretty favourably, if not equivalent. I mean, I think Stoke, you know, uh, Graham asked the question, um, uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek, but I think they they obviously brought in Kundal. I think they signed someone today, uh, a wide forward from, I'm trying to remember where from, um, from somewhere in Europe. Uh, and they've also been been they've been linked with Ennis now as well. So um, um, I think by maximum they're going to bring in three players. Now obviously they didn't necessarily lose players either in the way we did, but um, some of the players we've lost or loaned weren't playing. So in effect we've increased the size of our squad in a similar way. Huddersfield I think have brought in three decent first team players, if not a fourth today. I can't remember. Um, I wish I'd remembered where the um, that fellow. Um, came from who went to Stoke earlier today um but they seem quite excited about that um Stoke fans but not quite so enchanted with um with uh Kundal's performances so far and they weren't particularly uh, enamored with the idea of Ennis coming in um Gavin's saying it's a done deal now um Joe's gone to Wickham yeah um uh they'll 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 enjoy his um his 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 timbre up there. I used to get my my dad's family's from Wickham. They used to enjoy the way I speak up there. Um, uh, yeah. So the, two out of those three, I don't think Stoke fans are particularly excited about. I think Huddersfield done a reasonable bit of business, but then they've just sacked the manager and brought someone else in. So is the man the new manager going to enjoy um, those players? Um, that's kind of a bit of a seem to me a bit of a disconnect between the recruitment and the the manager. Where, while um. Um, what's his name? He's just gone, just been sacked. Someone jump in. More uh, good manager. Darren yeah. Moore. Darren Moore. Yeah, thank you. It just mine went completely blank. Um, a disconnect between Moore and the recruitment team because you know there wasn't necessarily a they seemed like pretty good players, but then to sack Darren Moore, um, sort of right at the end of the window seems a bit of a bizarre sort of disconnect between the hierarchy there. And when there's a bit of disconnect, that always makes you sort of glad as a an opposing fan looking in so despite those being good players the the new manager still has to get a tune out of them they still have to bed in with the rest of the team um wednesday don't seem to have done anything particularly brilliant to strengthen themselves um you know i still see wednesday fans talking about how great barry bannon is one of the best midfielders in the championship and stuff and you know there's no point picking a fight but if if, if he's still the best player in their squad then sure? i think sounds unlike you to not pick a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, something does come over me at times, I know. Um, I don't think there's anything to worry about from Wednesday. Um, and you know, Rotherham, are, you know, there's no point to worry about what Rotherham is, only the, those other two spots we're talking about, really. I think, um, so yeah, I don't, yeah, as for like, I think Millwall, um, they've done some reasonably nice business yeah. that I've seen, um, but also I think they're sort of starting to play for the manager's got them playing the way he wants. So I'd, I'd be surprised maybe if we finished above Millwall or, or thereabouts, but I th Swansea still aren't convincing me. Mm. Um, and I don't, I haven't actually kept a track of Swansea's business. I can't honestly say I've seen anything, whether that's because there's been nothing exciting that hasn't popped up or just because I've, you know, I've not shown an interest. I don't know. 
Um, I mean, there's there's something quite exciting in the fact that they've they've signed Yannick Bellassi and let him go um, in this window, which is is, is uh, some feat in itself. But um, I, can't, I can't see uh, any clamour for Yannick back. There was a, there was a little bit on on Twitter, but I, I can't <laughs> I can't see him fitting the mould. If, he's not, of, good, if um, he's not good enough for Swansea, um, who hmm. you imagine have space for a mercurial kind of a talent, given their sort of um start style of play they could sort of maybe afford one i don't think he's going to fit in for the high pressing high energy ian foster's uh gritty greens um so yeah i don't to to yeah to um to answer joe's question now that he's not here i, I don't think there's anybody done any business that i'm worried about I, I think probably the best business that's been done below us in the table has been by huddersfield and i don't think huddersfield are well equipped necessarily to put it into the to put it to the best use so I actually feel like we've probably strengthened better than anybody in this what you'd probably call the mini league. That's so there's a sort of four point gap above us, isn't there? But that will that will shift about in the coming weeks as everybody down here starts playing each other again. But um, yeah, I think we've done the best business really, um, and that's superficial because you know some of those guys, you know Isaac Hayden might go in and absolutely smash it um, and, and be exactly what they need, for example. And some of the guys we've brought in might all of a sudden drop off a cliff, even though they've looked great the first couple of games. So you, you know you, you you're going by you know, you're presuming, and of course you've got, I have green tinted glasses in the matter, but just in terms of numbers, quality, pedigree, promise, you got, we, we seem to be getting players in that have, you know, to use the old um, cliche, you know, their ceiling is much higher than, than I think, than, than some of the other signings we've seen go into other clubs. And certainly it's the, the, the reasoning and the logic behind it seems much clearer. You know, they've been brought in to fit a certain style. We brought in the manager, you know, it all seems to mesh much more, um, logically, I think there's you know some of the other teams have appear to have brought people in like this guy's good. He's you know, we've got a, a gaping hole here. Think about Huddersfield squad. You know they need a striker. They need a a decent midfielder. As they've gone out and they've got a decent striker and a decent midfielder. But whether they're the exact as I mentioned earlier, like the right shaped peg for the for the hole that they've got is another matter. You know uh, that you wonder how good they they've assessed or if they've gone out and just got what seems to be the best available. So, yeah, I think I, I don't think there's um, anything to worry about from our immediate rivals. I think some of the other clubs above us have done fantastic business. Teams like Borough, teams like especially Hull, I think, has, you know, everybody's looked at Hull's business and sort of whistled. Um, so, you know, I think we're, we're not worrying about those teams yet, are we? You know, this season, it's all about those ones that are currently below us. And I think that, you know, we can be quite, quite pleased um, with the lack of business or the business they've done, although I'm, you know, surely going to eat humble pie about one or two of those signings coming good. Well, what, the Huddersfield striker was one that we were looking at, Radulic, mm. playing for Helsinki. Yeah, the, I think he got 19 goals in 23 games, and <clears throat> I think they paid 1.2 million, which at the time they signed him might have been beyond us, but maybe we've, we've got a bit of money from Gillespie and compensation and so on maybe we could have afforded him but um um be interesting to see how he i think he played one and got injured in one game and that's it so time will tell i mean there, there's one way we could have afforded him had we sold our best asset as well and i'm glad we didn't do that either so yeah. um you know it's all it's all swings and roundabouts so, i mean uh jack says uh, I think the Argyle admin has forgotten the password to the account. It's got awfully quiet. I, I can imagine they are, or I hope they are doing some um, interesting, fun deadline day content with a, with a new signing. Um, Femi Aziz. And Mason Mann says, any more income moons or, you record or, or transfer business completed for this window? Obviously, Femi, I'm going to switch that question slightly. Do, do you see any any more outgoings, Graham? Uh, like maybe a maybe yeah, a Freddie as well. Uh, no. no, I think we're done there, aren't we? I think that, I don't think there's anyone else to give away um, to Wickham. <laughs> Although Freddie to Wickham would be quite good, but I think there's a cap, right? Um, Gavin Jones is reporting that Ennis is a is a done deal. Um, I don't think we really need to spend too long talking about. Blackburn I wonder if the facilities Stoke. are better at Stoke than at Blackburn. Yeah, I did. I did jump <laughs> on very quickly. I've pre-recorded a live segment for that Stoke podcast that, that we seem to have been on an awful lot this season um, about Ennis, who, you know, um, 
Yeah, uh, Rory Drake saying Matete to Oxford on loan is confirmed. We definitely didn't know that, did we, Ben? Um, <laughs> earlier, um, no, I don't want to give away any details, but 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 um, yeah, he's not coming here, let's put it that way, um, without giving away too much. Um, yeah, uh, where are the starred questions? They are here. Um, on to Saturday, then, Graham. Do you, do you see Wickham, uh, Wickham, Whitaker? Getting his revenge on on Swansea, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be a two 0 win with Matty Sorinola popping up as well, getting his first goal. Well, well for, for the home game against Swansea, he didn't actually have a very good game at all. Probably his worst game of the season. So whether he was trying too hard or what to to be effective, but um, yeah, I can I can see us nicking it. Um, as Ian Foster said in his press conference today. If we don't concede, then we've got every chance of winning. So that's the starting point. And we certainly seem to have improved our defensive capabilities from, from the Shuey Shoe era, although it is early days, but it does look that way after the four games he's played. Um, <clears throat> I'm just hoping and praying. It's the monkey off the back if we can do it. And then Sunderland away, we got a chance. Middlesbrough, I mean, it, now more so I always felt sure he always felt he didn't that away win wasn't going to come I never felt confident it was whereas if you look into Foster's eyes he's sort of focused and intense and wants to deliver it uh, it's almost like he's sort of he wants to deliver it more than possibly winning the FA Cup against Leeds almost is that determined and I'm sure the um, squad will get that message loud and clear in their preparation for the game. Just just very quickly, Aaron, um, it seems like Wickham Wanderers have a um, some sort of weird uh, affinity with signing Plymouth Argyle League One title winners. Um, they are apparently on the verge of signing Nigel Lonvike on loan for the rest of the season. Um, he's obviously out at Grasshoppers of Zurich. Um, but yeah, it, it would appear that Wickham's transfer deadline day business isn't done yet. Uh, Nigel Lonvike to, to Wickham on a season-long loan. It's all happening for the chair boys. Yeah, that's quite interesting because I thought his loan in Switzerland was cancelled because he had a, a season-long injury. So um, interesting that he's over that already um yeah okay interesting interesting shenanigans i mean, I mean you know lombard wasn't terrible for us he was often scapegoated or obviously as we know our fans love a, a scapegoat um collectively myself included in that by the way um and i, I feel like nigel was that a lot of last season and there were games where he'd have you know, an incredible game and an awful game in the same 90 minutes, you know, uh, each 45. So I think, you know, League One is his level now, but I can see him doing a, I don't want to say doing an, 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 a pokey where he looks terrible for us and goes on to actually play at quite a high level, but I feel like that's what he's going to do. Um, it, it would seem yeah. with, with Lomvike going to Wickham and with, Butcher going to Wickham and with Early going to Wickham and uh, who's the other one? Jay Matete going to Oxford that um, quite a few of our title winning squad um, are League One based, aren't they? That, you know, not mm. not many of them seem to be able to do it at a higher level, unfortunately, which is a bit like I always thought how Derek Adams used to build his his squads. It was very much a squad for here and now rather than the net, you know, pre-planning ahead for the next level. On that, it's quite interesting though. It's like, you know how um, the tone that the club's um, official press releases have when when people go on to um, other. Always oh, seem to have lost Joe when they go on to other clubs. Um, you know that like tone where they're like, oh well, you know, off you go. I'm not going to wish you good luck. Um, I, I quite. I, I, I mean, we've disagreed with this privately, haven't we, Ben? Uh, about this, whereas I didn't like it, but actually, in hindsight, it's actually quite nice that. I don't want to say nice in the fact that these players aren't um, doing well at other clubs, but, but players that have decided to leave or decided to go on to other things aren't doing as well. I mean, that is absolutely brilliant for us. And it's almost like a go on, on you go, but you, you won't do better than us. 
it's actually that's actually quite a refreshing attitude to have, despite the fact that I disagreed with you on that. Um, well, the, the one you were discussing was um, was Elliot Turner, wasn't it? That was the disagreement we had about yeah, the yeah. way that was announced. And my, my my argument was that if you don't mean it, it's just a platitude, and that's effectively a lie. There's no point saying we wish you well when you know that the club doesn't, because he's you know gone out, gone with with the rest of the coaching staff, sort of um, sort of. What, is it, what I describe as a fait accompli by um by by Shuey, et cetera. And it's sort of like if you don't wish someone well, there's no point doing it just because it's the done thing when you don't actually mean it. So um I quite like that honesty and I find that quite refreshing. And I also like that that when we do, you know, when a play the opposite is true. Because some people see that as petty, but then with Butch, we are willing to, you know, catch his contract to let him go and play because he obviously dealt with us honorably or the club felt like he dealt with us honorably and it was you know in their best interest um for, for, for the player and so i think that you know it's like if you deal what deal with the club well and honestly you get dealt with well and honestly and if you deal with the club sort of backhandedly the club's not going to bend over and and let you take advantage of them um and yeah it certainly is nice to sort of players who've maybe like you say sacked us off or decided not to sign that contract you know, Ennis as an example, it's like, well, the grass isn't greener. It's not necessarily a smugness. You know, you'd like to see him do well in his career, but we're normally on the the brown end of that stick, aren't we? Where someone will, you know, they use us as a springboard and rather than showing loyalty, they'll go on and 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 do great things somewhere else where you sort of feel we took a chance on them and they could mm. have repaid that with, you know, even if it's just a season or, or signing the contract extension. So I could have got a bit of money for them. And so it's nice to see that it's our business dealings that seem to be be, be, be working out you know, we seem to be the clever ones, or, or or the ones making the the most of the of the situations, being the 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 birds of prey, as it were, rather than the the field mice getting constantly uh, picked off. Well, I mean, Elliot Turner was a bit of a strange one because he didn't go at the same time as the others, and there seemed to have been something that went wrong behind the scenes. That I think that's because he was ill, Graham. Sorry, I think that's because yeah. he was ill. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it will come out in the wash at some time. <clears throat> Maybe we didn't have to, we couldn't get compensation for him. I, I don't know. But um, name any Argyle player that's left us and done really well. Uh, Ashley Barnes. <laughs> yeah, that's but, all yeah all well, that wasn't right. from from us. <clears throat> so then his immediate next move was to yeah. Brighton, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I think, I think the last step. The last Akos set of players right, that did really it. well, uh, like um, Bobby Reed and Yala Balassi, you know, players that, that were taken from us when we were at our lowest and, and were forced out, I think. I think they're the last set of players that have really gone on to anything really great, you know. like, like, like Even think, when you say really great, you mean Balassi just rocked up at Everton. Um, I think <laughs> like, that's a really good point, though, Graham, because didn't Derek Adams used to say it when he was questioned about why there was such a high turnover of players in the transfer windows when he was manager that, you know, he always used to come back and say, well, name me a player who's gone on to bigger and better things once they've left me. You know, it, it's it's an interesting point because, you know, you think obviously Niall Ennis is the one that's immediately springing to mind. Um you know, could you argue perhaps Ruben Lameras, maybe, yeah, or even Graham Graham Carey went in Graham Carey went and scored in Europe, didn't he? Um so I mean he went on to play in Europe for Sofia. But there aren't many, not certainly not in recent times, that have been able to go on to, to bigger and better things. The the one you could possibly suggest at a push would be for me, I would say, is Sonny Bradley, who was actually a contracted Argo player. Mm -hmm. Um, he was probably the last one that I can think of off the top of my head, anyway. Yeah, but and he and got dropped the second they made the Premier League, you know, like and dropped down into League One. So it's like, you know, again, it's it's having those those right characters in the right places, isn't it? Sorry, Graham. Yeah, I know. There, there aren't many. They're more failures than successes. That's for sure. I think we can agree on that. Oh yeah, her her hands a great shout in the comments actually. Yeah. Again, again, picked off when we were at, you know, our lowest. So, Sam Gallagher, another one. Uh, Jackie, he, he definitely was. Sam Gallagher was definitely one it, to put in the got away character category, isn't yeah. it? Given that he was one of the administration 
buy a sale. I mean, what was he? 50, was he? Was he only fifteen, Graham? When fifteen, sixteen? Yeah. yeah. He when when our go. I mean, we did get three hundred thousand for him as part of the deal when he Blackburn signed him. I think. Um, you can Jack handle Edwards the hot tub. Sold for hundred and fifty grand, I think, in the admin period. Yeah, I think there was some talk this transfer window that um, he was on Ipswich's radar and they've ended up getting Kiefer Moore. I think I know which yeah. of the two I'd much rather have. And I think, they, with all due respect to Sam Gallagher, I think they've done pretty well with, with the deal they've pulled off. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, they, they we didn't mention them as, as uh, whilst they're much more elevated. I think they've had a good window. They're definitely mm. trying to buy the promotion, that's for sure. Yeah. Um Sorry. So, oh, go on, Joe. Go on, Aaron. No, go on. No, You're gonna, the host. I was going to say, sorry to go back to, obviously, the, the game against uh, Swansea on um, Saturday. Martin Gill has asked, uh, who doesn't make the squad on Saturday? Um, we're looking quite... I don't, well, I don't, we're not looking stacked, are we? But, I mean, in terms of, like, we don't really have anybody out with injuries where we, we're used to having mm. Mikel Miller and <laughs> Galloway and others missing. I think our only, our only major injury now is Cooper, right? Or have I missed yeah. anyone? Yeah, it was Cooper and Early, and now Early's come back and gone. So, yeah. um, I think that the the team selections by Foster have been even more surprising than the one Schumacher put out. Uh, to be honest, um, you know, I think that um, who makes the squad is 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 at the moment is until we know exactly how until he's got his style in play, we're really not going to know. Um, We'd probably sit here and pick a sort of a, a, a five three two one, and then you know play a different formation or something because because he feels like it. So at the minute, it's kind of that's not really a game I'm interested in playing because there's no way of knowing. There's nothing to base it on yet, really. Um, I mean, so, so one of the other lads might have a better answer than me of saying I'm not playing. Um, but you know, I really don't think that we can can make any assumptions given the fact that he was willing to to throw Caleb Roberts in against Leeds. And yes, it is a cup game, so it's probably better to throw him into that than a league game. I don't think he'll be quite so experimental against mm -hmm. Wansley, but I do think that the club are taking the uh -huh. FA Cup reasonably seriously. So it wasn't a complete, um, you know, frivolous choice, I don't think. So no, I mean, if, you, if you actually listen to what he said about playing him, he said yeah. he really impressed him in training. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, if you've seen Caleb play through the ranks, he's very aggressive. He's quick. He's very competitive. So he's just slight of build, perhaps, for championship football. But I can see why he would want to play that role. You know, I'm, I was surprised. Um, um, but once he got to the pace of the game, I think he did did OK. Um, yeah. No, so, so there's no reason why, you know, we won't see maybe surprises. Um, we might see, you know, even... The game where we have Mumba playing over on the right, you know, we, I don't think we've seen him starting as a right-sided fullback um, no. all, all season. So, you know, don't know, especially with the players that have come in now, you know, they might get thrown in. So Anola might start if he's up to ninety minutes. Who knows? So, yeah, I, I, it's, it's interesting to speculate, but I don't think that you can actually draw any reasonable conclusions on. on well, I mean, the one thing is we can't predict what the team is, and we know the team inside out. So, how are the opposition yeah. going to prepare? Yeah, fair. That's a good point. Um, we are just, what are we now? We're 58 minutes. I'm looking at the TV. We've got Sky Sports News on in the home here, and they've conveniently, for the first time all day, they've taken their countdown clock off the screen. So I can't give you an actual um, sight of being end of the time. 58 minutes to go. Um, and well, as it stands. Those signings do happen an hour. They do. They if do. I remember but rightly, we are not from the... on for an hour after the deadline. <laughs> no, we are not. Um, from what I remember from deadline days previous, as long as the deal sheet is with the Football Association by 11 p.m., clubs then get a one-hour grace. Um, yeah, I think yeah. it's just an hour. Um, so as long as the deal sheet hits the FA's desk or their fax machine, how, does any? I don't know if they still use a fax machine at the Football Association, given how many dinosaurs there are up there, probably they do. <laughs> Um, but as long as that deal sheet hits their table by 11 p.m., then we could potentially get an hour's grace to get, if it is going to be Femi Aziz, 
Um, I have been keeping check of social media tonight, and there is currently no update other than the one we had at about Joe. eight o'clock just as we came on air. Aaron. Joe. Oh. Breaking news. Um, oh. No, don't get, too, don't get too excited. Um, oh. From 10 p.m. I think, I think, I think it's only Sam Down, isn't it? Joined by Sam Down and John Alsop as Ben and Graham make way, but they have not joined the stream yet. How classic is it of Sam <laughs> and John to be running late? Um, so we'll keep we'll Have keep on the deal we'll sheet in now, yeah. um, for for a minute or two. Uh, Rory Drake said, um, "How long?" We were talking about injuries and, and not having anybody out. Uh, <laughs> and I think Graham, you might be our our resident drill expert. I don't know if you've seen this video. Um, I've heard about <laughs> it, but not seen it. Yeah, it's, it's it's some some way to announce our new signing of, of Lino uh, Sousa. Um, in the in the car and the, the Citroen Berlingo or whatever. I don't really know cars, but it looks it looks. Uh... A, I believe it's a Ford S Max. If you care. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Oh, nice Ford S Max. Um, our new signing, uh, Lino Sousa. Um, I don't I don't know if we've touched on him with yourself. Thoughts thoughts on our new man? Well, I, actually, I, I I've got a little slight problem because the guy who sits in front of me, the Linda, we call him One Job Bob. Because he stands up and says, Lino, you got one job. <laughs> and he can't really say that now, can he? Particularly if we're kicking uh, towards the barn park end in, in the first half. So it'd be interesting to see how he ameliorates his um, comments during the game. But um, he's renowned for having a dig at the Lino, as he calls him, or her, as it has been recently. Um, so, but I mean, looking. The show reel that I saw of him, tall, mm. left wing, pace, uh, left sided, pacey, good cross through the ball. I mean, he looks every bit the sort of player that we we need. You know, height again. So, uh, um, I'm, I, I, you know, well rated by Arsenal fans. Can't understand why Teta let him go. So mm. that's good enough for me. But proof is in the pudding. Playing in the in the in the championship is a different category to some of the academy games, isn't it? So I think him and Galloway would make a tasty left-sided pairing, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Sort of like with with um, especially with if, if Mumba continues to play play uh, right, in front right, of them, yeah. that's like you know they can all defend. They all look like they can go forward. You know they can swap and interchange potentially. It looks like a very fluid, dynamic uh, left-hand side, and and we've been relying so much on the right. Yeah, no, I mean, we've, we've got pace in the team now, all over. Yeah, yeah. Which is there's a lot of athletes the in game, the team uh, now. I'm sure, pace and height, and a bit more physicality, which is what I think we needed. Yeah. What's the odds on Aziz coming in? Do you reckon then, guys? Are we are we fifty fifty long over over evens or what? I did, I did see a message to say he'd left on a train from Reading to Plymouth. Oh, great. Um, Given me, Filled me with dread, given GWR's track record, literally track record. For yeah, um, <laughs> we've already, <laughs> we've already had time. one dig at Great Western, and I and I must uh, make a correction on what I said. They are not on strike on Saturday. They are. I can't remember what he said, but something about it's an action strike. short oh, of a strike. Band, I think, I think it is. it's an overtime. It's, band. He's left for Plymouth on a bus on a, on a rail replacement service. <laughs> <laughs> If he, if he has if he has left for Plymouth on a train from Reading, let's hope there's no leaves on the line. Um, yeah. On a serious point, Ben, I think um, I do wonder whether the the sands of time will just run out on us. Um, you know, it it seemed. I mean, we were linked with him what a couple of days ago, maybe, and it, you just wonder whether things are a little bit um, too close to call now. Um, obviously, I wouldn't ever recommend people betting on these sorts of markets as somebody who works in the world of turf accountancy. Please gamble responsibly. Um, but, you know, it's I would suggest we're probably more the, the longer it goes on, um, the less likely I would say it, it becomes because we haven't had an update since since quarter past eight. So, yeah, I wonder if yeah, maybe if you we'll remember, don't you remember Bundu? Yeah. How late that yeah, was. Yeah, true. Um, and I... getting the medical done, it wasn't. Didn't get um, the physio have to go over to Belgium to do it? And I mean, it, yeah. all these things, you know. It, um, I, I, 
the one thing he's out of contract to the end of the season. Reading need the money. I'm I'm sure we're going to be paying some sort of fee. So I'm yeah, that's, optimistic. That's that's kind of where I am. I'm like Reading need the money. Hey, John. We Hello. Reading need the money, but um, Aaron changed. They've also been for the better, much much for the better. Um, but um, they they need the money, but. Also, I wonder if we've been maybe trying to strong arm maybe a bit too much. I don't think that's the club's style. I don't think that they want to sort of have those relationships with people. But given there's reports that they don't want him to leave, that they see him as integral, it might be sort of one of those that it might just have dragged, like you suggest. Um, you can still hear me. I, it's nothing I wouldn't say to your face, mate. Um, yeah, I, I, it's one of those. I think it's probably on a knife edge. You just sort of hope, <laughs> hope that the uh, all the documentation and all that, and then, like you say, we've got the the fit, the, the medical. That would be ironic, wouldn't it? If we get the sheet in, and then uh, and then he fails the medical or something. But yeah, we will see. It'll be exciting. It definitely would be exciting. He's he's quite tall and he's quite big, um, and so no, he's, he's big... slim. He's, he's a if you look at Elise of Palace, he's a rangy he's a physical rangy replica slim. of him. Yeah. Um, he sort of again could potentially fill a role if we if we go from as we talked about earlier if, if Hardy's not playing the nine and Wayne isn't up to it he's the sort of guy that can play opposite Whitaker and and run in behind as a, as a two but anyway I will love you and leave you is Sam here yet or am I not going to love you and leave no you? not yet is is oh. Joe Frazy he's st he's still trying to wear off his Joe Frazy I think that he's had for his dinner so yeah you're you're all right to ramble on for a little bit longer um, John good evening delighted to hear that. Good, e good evening. How are you? Good. Uh, trembling with excitement. I'm, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you have no no finer way to spend your Thursday evening than rambling with us lot. Um, well, I was watching um, I was watching the transfer deadline day coverage on Sky Sports News earlier, and they had some really thrilling conversations about Lewis Hamilton, Marcus Rashford, and how <laughs> FFP is just so ghastly unfair on Newcastle who've been taken over by the Saudis and have all this money they're not allowed to spend it it's not right is it Gary Rowett it's not right as Gary Rowett sort of sits there uh shuffling awkwardly in his seat um no absolutely uh dreary transfer deadline day on the Premier League front um so I was watching The Apprentice instead very good um of course what you should have been watching is the transfer deadline day live stream brought from Argo Life the Green and White What's podcast that? but never heard of it no idea um, Graham, um, just one more thing before you go then. Um, obviously, we've signed Phillips, JB, Devine, Sorinola, Forshaw and Souser. I can't obviously, I don't expect you to give me a glowing recommendation for Souser at the moment. But of the five that we have signed, apologies if you touched on this a little bit earlier, it's been a long night. Um, of the five that we have signed, who's the one that's caught your eye most out of the the five that we've we've more evidence of so far uh i would say ashley phillips <clears throat> he's uh I, I think somebody referred to him to rear ferdinand i sort of see him a little bit more like van dyke actually he, he, he's very comfortable left or right foot he steps forward with confidence um i mean six foot four, four so he should win his fair share of headers but because he's on the right side. I haven't seen him win too many aerial duels in, in the game he's played. But, I mean, I mean, the first game he played, uh, he struck a beautiful ball down the touchline, curved round the wing back that Hardy rang on, ran on to. He played his part in the Morgan Whitaker third goal. Um, I, you know, I know Spurs fans rate him very highly, and he was in the first team squad and made the bench. So uh, I think we've got ourselves a real player for the rest of the season. I do. And um, um, <clears throat> I really enjoy just watching his, I mean, he's only 18, for God's sake. I mean, it's the difficult six foot four, 18. And, you know, he, he, he's, he's solid, good in the tackle. Um, so I think he's going to be our, our most accomplished loanee purchase. Although I do think Adam Forshaw will actually prove over time to be a really good signing from what from the end we've only seen him for, for one game but um you could see the old pro coming out in that game and that's that's going to help us a lot i think in the, when 
the games get tough, which it will do with 11 games or 10 games in 33 days and possibly 11. It certainly will. Um, ben, same question, really. Um, of the five that have come in, who's your who's caught your eye most? And just to make it even more complicated, you can't say Ashley Phillips. OK, other than Ashley Phillips, who I think probably has the highest, like he's going to go to the very top. I think the one that's probably going to have the biggest, not biggest impact, but um, catch the eye the most for us is going to be Jamie. I think yeah. that, I don't suspect he'll probably go as far as Phillips, but he's probably slightly, um, I mean, I put a tweet out, I think, um, after the the win at, at, at home. You go but... out mute. Sorry? You say I'm muted? No, carry on. I'm okay. having technical issues. Carry on. Sorry. Um, the, he had a few, like, he. I wouldn't call them mistakes, but he sort of passed the ball slightly too far forward or to the wrong foot of a player. And these kind of, I wouldn't say sloppinesses, but little, um, little errors, um, sort of slackness in his play. But he also played some absolutely wondrous balls. His, his vision, weight of pass was excellent. His reading of the game was excellent. He got out to people at the right time. He obviously understood the press. Um, and if he can sort of iron out, if he can crisp and that um, crisp up that the sort of like the, the technicality of his play, um, he could be an absolute, you know, a masterstroke of a sign, and he could be, be exactly what what we need there. That sort of energetic, combative um, midfielder to play opposite the old head in four sure He will essentially sort of receive the ball. You imagine, um, set let the let the field set itself, and then either play J, play the ball to JB to drive with, or or ping a ball out, and then JB's there to sort of mop up. Um, he, I, I couldn't necessarily find a direct comp for him. I mean, there were several I, I, I thought of. He had he looked a bit like a Javier Mascherano when he used to play in midfield before he sort of dropped back into defence. That kind of, but he, but obviously bigger. Um, and but that sort of ability to to read, to pass, to break things up, but to to move with the ball if necessary. But he he, he moved even more like a. I saw saw someone comp him to to Yaya Torre, which I thought was reasonable. Except I haven't seen him shoot, but that just that all round athletic ability to do anything in the middle of the park park um sort of box to box almost ability that you don't really see these days so i really think jb could be um could be could be massive for us again we're making these these observations based on two or three games two for jb three for phillips um so you know that things could change but but yeah i really think he's got everything you need to be a a midfielder already at this level um, but definitely, you know, if, if Leeds were willing to pay what they paid for him uh, to, to 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 develop him, they trust he's got it to to do it at a higher level. They're certainly aiming to be a Premier League club for for the remainder of that. You know, for, from here on out, they're hoping this is a one season blip and they'll be back to the Premier League and he'll be playing a, a role for them. I know five million isn't necessarily a lot for them, but it's not a drop in the in the bucket either. So they believe he's got the the ability to to do that job in the Premier League. I think he's he could really um, add a lot both going forward and defensively for us this season. Lovely. Ben, Graham, it's been a pleasure having you on Thank for you. the last hour and 15. Um, see you both soon on the regular podcast. Yeah, I'm enjoy sure. the exciting now, bit, Yeah, it's been good. Thank you. Cheers, gents. Cheers. And now we have some breaking news. This is an important <laughs> bit of breaking news for you all. This is hot off the press. He's here. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Deadline nice day up, has delivered the one and only Sam we Down. The public have been waiting for hours for this moment. Sam has come amongst us. Sam, how are you? I'm good. It's good to have the uh, the core four back together again, the original podcast group. And then, with all uh, due respect to the fantastic Graham and... Uh, ben, and it's time to log off. Fantastic. With all due respect to the fantastic Graham and Ben, who have uh, filled in marvellously while I was eating my gel frazzy tonight. Um, yeah, it's 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 good to be back. And um, thank you for all the lovely comments. You know, they say that in this country, they like to build you up and then knock you down. And I'm clearly the victim of it. What can I say? But uh, yeah, here we are. I just want to say, I just want to say, our, our, our viewership for the last hour has been in around about 150, 160. We're seeing, we've seen an almighty spike in viewers since Sam Down has come on tonight's show. How, how many of how many are on now? We're well over 200, Sam. Put it that way. <laughs> I 
I'm getting to thank you, Jack. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'm um I, I, I'm at the stage now where I think I just have to accept I can't I can't have a I can't have a, a haircut that's actually shaving my head because there's just not enough left of it. I have to start having uh more precise trims, I think, with the way the hairline's going. So thank you for that comment. But uh you're not wrong is all I can say. Um yes, I'm I'm here finally. Um a little bit delayed by work, then my Jal Frazy being late to arrive, but um yeah, it's uh no, I have a haircut yesterday, thank you. But uh yeah, we're here and we are well, a little nervous that there's still no sign of an attacking midfielder, but long long ish way to go, yeah. Sam, I um, um I wanted, main... I wanted to say, Sam, I really, uh, I really enjoyed you in that video earlier this week. Almost, it, um... almost couldn't recognise you under the balaclava, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you did very well. Didn't know you had. I, I don't, I don't have a clue. What you... Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I can't do that accent. I have to say, and anyway, I think, did I think you, the you um, hear that penny drop. <laughs> the the chap was quite a bit thinner than me as well, wasn't he? I think yeah, you know you're, you're flattering, flattering me really by saying that was me. <laughs> oh god, um, Sam. The, the main talking point in the comments uh, it was obviously deadline day. Have you managed to sign a chair? <laughs> yes, yeah, I did see that comment. Staying, Thank you. He's staying at QPR. I don't think they sell to a rival. <laughs> The problem I have for all the comments about my about my constant standing up is I live in a shared house. There is a chair downstairs, but I've got housemates who are always, you know, occupying downstairs. So I, I could Well no, there's more than one chair, but I can't squeeze the chair into my into my bedroom. So if I if I need to sit on a chair, I need to go downstairs, which is the problem, and which is which means me annoying the people who I live with. So I, I'm in my room, which means I'm standing up. That's that's just the way it goes. But I'm fine, you know. I if people want an MTV crib style um, Sam down additional content of how many chairs he has in his house, um, please let us know, and I'm sure we can get that live on YouTube. Um, anyway, back to um, proper deadline day. Um, John, give us, give us, let's give us, you give us your thoughts first on how on on how you think January's gone, because I think we all know that Sam differs in view. Um, I think it has gone. Very well, actually. I think if you, um, you know, cast your mind back to the beginning of the month, we didn't have a manager. Um, Finn is as a player who obviously we had, uh, I think, all heard rumours that, you know, might be coming down here on a permanent contract. In my opinion, as I've said many times, our best player left. Um, Kondal obviously going. I personally wasn't as bothered about that as some, but, you know, a good player for us and, and where he went hurt. Um, so. Um, yeah, I think if you if you scrolled back to that point uh, and and then kind of fast forwarded in time to now, I think we'd all be well. Sam might have a different view. I personally am very happy with with where we are. Um, obviously, a huge huge part of that is that you know, th thirty nine minutes to um, for this to look stupid, I guess still, but uh, it does seem fairly likely that Morgan Whitaker is still going to be here, and I think that alone, even without any incomings, um, would have been you know, just considered absolutely huge. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when Morgan Whitaker had signed for Brentford. Um, I don't know if anyone else is, but back in the mists of uh, sort of early January, uh, which didn't happen. So, so yeah, um, that's just a huge, huge boost. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I think apart from the departure of Azaz, I think, I think you could make a case that we've sort of upgraded in um, quite a number of, of positions. Um you know, hard to, it hasn't really exactly been a like-for-like -like replacement for Azaz. With Kundal, there's sort of a couple, I guess, we've signed to sort of replicate different parts of Kundal's game. Um, but I think Divine looks an exciting signing. I think JD looks very exciting from what I've seen of him. But obviously, I think, you know, I think Phillips for Gillespie, uh, if that's the kind of nominal trade-in, is um, bringing in a player who looks like he's going to be ever-present for us or, or the first one of the first names on the team sheet for a player who we know has had injury problems. Um and um you know not been in the team so much um it, it, ditto you know bringing in for sure sort of starting midfielder and the one who shuffled out then is is butcher who hasn't played so many minutes um got a really exciting young left left wing back left back coming in today um and we're shuffling out saxon early a player who hasn't played for us at all this season apart from that that one game at watford not for ability but just injury so 
to me, it really feels like we've, you know, actually strengthened the squad bar the departure of Azaz, which is the big, the big but. Um, but, you know, we've done it in ways where I think we look as exciting and kind of fresh and fun as we were before. Um, but also at the same time, um, yeah, look a little bit more experienced also with the with the uh, addition of Foreshore, a little bit tighter at the back with the addition of Phillips. Um, so, yeah, I'm very content. And if I had to put a numerical value on it, I'd give it uh, an 8 out of 10, just to set up the contrast with Sam, who's going to talk now. Yeah, um, I think what's been quite interesting about the outgoings and ingoings is almost every one of them could be seen as a fairly direct replacement. So we'll we'll just run through them one by one and then I'll maybe get to the end and do an overall summary. So Phillips for Gillespie. Early, but seems a pretty clear upgrade. Gillespie looked fairly out of his depth at this level. Phillips has looked a lot better. And also, we naturally needed a right sider more than a left sider because we did have three left siders anyway. So to get a right sider in just made it a bit more balanced. It was more balanced and seemingly a lot more quality. So would entirely agree Phillips over Gillespie upgrade. JB over Warrington. Well, that's obviously an upgrade because Warrington never played. And when he did, he was terrible. So again, when, when I was just when I was just talking about when I was just talking about our upgrades and downgrades and players who'd left and come in, I genuinely actually forgot Lewis Warrington existed or was ever a part of this calculus, which maybe tells you all you need to know. There we go. There we go. So yeah, I'm, I'm not 100 percent on JB yet. It's very early, but he's clearly an upgrade on Warrington from the fact that he can even contribute to the minutes. So that, that one's beyond doubt. For sure for Butcher, again, I'd say pretty clear upgrade. For sure, it, I'm like, you know, maybe that's a bit too soon. He has only played one game, but from that one game, he looked very commanding, very, very mature. When he grew into the game and got up to pace, he played pretty well. So I think for and Butcher has looked out of his depth um, a, a lot this season, if in truthfulness, apart from at least he was very good. So Butcher for for sure, um, fairly clear upgrade. Upgrade seems tough for early, too early to say, maybe, but. Um, <laughs> Probably will end up being an upgrade, I would imagine, um, because early was more suited to a back four, uh, which we're now no longer playing. So probable upgrade. So four so far that look like upgrades. Um, Divine for Cundall. Too early to say. Could well end up being an upgrade. I was quite impressed with Divine in the... um... (laughs) I was quite... I'm sorry. I love these comments. I was quite impressed by Divine in the... um, most recent home game, uh, Cardiff, I couldn't think we played then. He was good in that. I didn't really agree with the comment saying he had a poor game. I thought he did pretty well. He got a good assist and played fairly well. So Divine and Cundall, too early to say, but, you know, possible upgrade at the very least. Um, Sorinola for KKH, very much too early to say, but, you know, certainly doesn't look like a downgrade on paper. So all of these look like upgrades or at least keeping on the same level. And, hey, most importantly, We've kept Morgan Whitaker, which I agree with John is, is one of the biggest things that could have. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ben. One of the biggest things that could have happened this um, this window. So all in all, that's all reasons to be positive. Obviously, we've lost Tyreek Wright and didn't replace him, which, you know, whatever, he barely played anyway. But we've also lost Finn Azad and to date, we've not yet replaced him. Now, I think I did initially say the window was a six out of ten. Um, having John and Dan talk me into it in our our group chat. There's no think about it. You did say that it was a 6 out of 10. I did say it was 6 out of 10, but having John and Dan talk me around, they basically said, look, the most important thing was keeping Whitaker, which we've done. And yes, as as is a blow, but we have um, strength in other areas. I think that's probably true. But um, (laughs) thank you, Finn. (laughs) But um, I would say that even if we do bring in Aziz, we are still ending the window weaker than we started it. And even if all of those others are slight to moderate upgrades, Finazad is just a fantastic player to the point where he is a one of the top players in the league for his position. And he's just such a gut-wrenching player to lose. Even if Aziz is a decent, serviceable player, I think that that's such a drop-off that it would still be slightly weaker overall. So... That was why I said six. I was talked up to a seven just based on Whitaker staying being so huge. So I think I was pretty much talked to a seven. But that being talked up to a seven is conditional on Aziz coming. If we lose Azaz and don't get a replacement attacking midfielder in, then it's back down to a six. 
because in that scenario, that just leaves us so incredibly thin on the ground. We would then have Whitaker and Divine as the first choice too, which obviously, you know, it, it's a great first choice too. But then after that, Callum Wright and what, Isaka? Bundu, I guess. But then if Bundu goes out there, then that means Wayne's the backup striker. So I, I think if we don't bring in another AM slash striker in the next 32 minutes, we are leaving ourselves very thin on the ground. I think if we do bring in, a, 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 you know, doesn't have to be an amazing player, just be a, a body of some sort, just someone to fill a gap. In that scenario, I think it's been a 7 out of 10 window because, yes, we might be slightly weaker overall, but, you know, if we're a little weaker overall, but we've kept Whitaker, we're still in a fantastic position to stay up. So in that scenario, it would be a 7. If we don't bring in an AM, then I think we're very fit on the ground. And I think then it's only a 6 out of 10 window just because we are so short of depth if that happens. Um, Nick said, serious question, how screwed are we if Hardy gets injured? Um, I would still say not massively screwed because we've not seen Bundu have a run of games as the lone striker. He's been unfortunate that for both of his injuries have coincided with Hardy getting injured. But Sheffield Wednesday, he started up front and scored. It's which he came on very early in the game and probably would have scored if not for Edmondson fouling him. So I wouldn't say massively screwed, but it wouldn't be good news for us at all, would it? Um and what would be very bad news is if he decides to play Wayne ahead of Bundu, with all due respect to Ben Wayne, because I think as much as he does have some qualities, um, Bundu, have, and he, Bundu is a far superior striker. He's, he's a winger, but he's still a better striker than Wayne is. So I wouldn't say, in response to Nick's question, I wouldn't say we're hugely screwed if Hardy were to go, but it would, and not least because we probably only need three, four more wins to stay up. I think we could do that if with Hardy injured, but it would be a blow for sure. Um, and it just highlights why we need to bring in another attacking midfielder slash striker. Because if we bring somebody who can play striker, obviously that's more backup for Hardy. If we bring somebody who can play attacking midfield, that frees up Bundu more to be the, the striker um, role. And I'm glad Tony has enjoyed the last five minutes as much as I have. Um, yeah. No, yeah, well, that, that's my thoughts. I think I, I'm not as positive as John just because I think the, the drop-off in quality in attacking midfield and also the lack of depth, but we have probably upgraded or at least equaled in every other um, like-for-like. And keeping Morgan Whitaker is an immense, immense achievement that's almost certainly going to secure our championship survival. So six out of 10, which could rise to a seven if Femi Aziz is confirmed in the next 29 minutes. And that's me done for now. I also think though that we've we've changed. I don't I don't necessarily want to say changed system, although that is literally true in terms of the formation, seemingly. Um, but we but we've become less reliant on having a player like Finazaz. We've changed the way that we play, and we've added quite considerable depth in positions where you know we were lacking before. That is going to well it already has shored us up, um, and I think. You know, you can say the two league games where we looked a lot better defensively and in defensive midfield were against Huddersfield and Cardiff, who are two of the poorer sides, or, you know, certainly in Huddersfield's case. Um, but, you know, two sides where you wouldn't necessarily expect a, a really tough test compared to some of the teams in our league. We also then went away to Leeds in the FA Cup, who are a top, top side, especially at home, um, and looked, I thought, as solid. They threw really everything at us and they. Um, only scored through what was really a, a wonder goal from from Jaden Anthony, where he sort of wriggled in and, and bent it into the top corner. In fact, in, in three proper games under Foster, we've conceded a goal that shouldn't have stood um, because um, it, yeah, because there was a foul in the build-up, uh, a goal from a set piece, and, and an excellent uh, sort of individual goal. Um, you know, whereas in equivalent games under Schumacher and then the kind of Jews nip interregnum, we were conceding you know, two, three goals a game with with Kamikaze defending. So I do get your point about the attacking midfield options, and I would love to be able to say we're going to bring someone in in the next uh, now 28 minutes. Um, well, I've only been talking for one minute. That's unusual for me. Um, but, but you know, I, I don't think it's absolutely essential because I think the emphasis of how we play has changed. Uh, and we still have a lot of, you know, really dangerous players in and around the side who can... Who are those kind of moments players? Hardy is still here. Whitaker seemingly touch all the available wood is, is still here. Um, yeah, so I feel good about that. I also think we might see a bit more attacking potential out of people like Mumba. Obviously, Soranola's come in. Sosa as well, because 
yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of emphasis on those wing backs, um, given that we, we sort of seem to be prioritizing solidity in that in that kind of deeper lying midfield area with the two consistently. Um, so I do, yeah, obviously I don't want to have lost as as and and then you know personally it's been a huge blow just because I, I love the bloke as, as regular listeners will know, but um, I, I feel I feel very good about where we are. Um, certainly having got those four points under the belt. And as you mentioned, Sam, I, I just don't think we actually need that much more from this point to stay up in all likelihood. Um, just an update, Aaron. We're 27 minutes away from the deadline. Um, Reading have this evening announced the departure of under-18s midfielder Taylor Harris, who's joined Luton on an undisclosed fee. Kaylin uh, Vickers has joined Brighton on a permanent transfer. Um, and they have literally just tweeted in the last two minutes a funny video of Delboy and Rodney out of Only Fools and Horses where Delboy looks surprised where he spits out his cigar. And the tweet reads, admin realising he's finishing the window with an incoming. Therefore, I would suggest that perhaps Femi Aziz is not going to become a Plymouth Argyle player this evening. If it Reading is also interesting. That they're fine. That it their is final bit of business these... will be a, an incoming. I say it's always interesting that these Twitter admins never lie. Um, I think we've, we we famously remember the "Don't go to bed just yet" tweet from uh, Leeds United, in which they announced uh, three outgoings: uh, Matt Smith. They've to got a podcast now as well, haven't they? Called "Don't go to bed yet." Oh yeah, I mean we've been on that, have we not? Or, or you have? We certainly uh, have. Uh, yeah. Our life is collective. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I think it's interesting. I think I think the Argyle in the no accounts are, are tweeting the, the eyes emoji. I think we know um, we, we've had a few people mention it um, to us that it's it's ongoing. But obviously it depends, right? It, it's all on medicals um, and personal terms and that sort of stuff. And if, if Reading have released two players, even if they're youngsters, they might not want to see another one leave so I would, be, um, I would be surprised now i would be surprised now if if femi aziz became an argyle player tonight there's no there's obviously not to say that in the summer that femi aziz wouldn't become an argyle player um because the likelihood is we're still gonna be in the championship he's the right age he, he'd fit the profile unless, for what ian yeah. foster wants so um i would just say that perhaps on this occasion time has just gone against argyle in getting this deal done um, but obviously, you know, there's still 24 minutes, as we mentioned with Graham and Ben, 24 minutes to get that deal sheet to the FA. And then you get an extra hour's grace to iron out the, the finer details. I don't I don't read the Reading uh, admin tweet as necessarily uh, foreclosing the possibility that someone is also going out. I don't think it's, you know, the only thing that's left in this window is to announce an incoming. I think it's just that they maybe didn't expect to be doing it at all. And also it could indicate, as I think one, one person has said in the comments, that... Um, they signed a replacement based on an incoming transfer fee, possibly. Um, is it? Not saying it's definitely. You know, I, I I have no idea if it's happening or not, and and you know obviously time is against us. But I would also remind everyone when we signed Bundu, we were all there furiously refreshing our uh, our guard Twitter feed, waiting for the evening, wasn't it? someone to be announced. And and we literally no one had ever heard of Bundu. The club kept it in, incredibly well, apart from uh, certain um, individuals who uh, played against him or worked with him uh, in his uh, glory days at Newquay or wherever it was. But um, the yeah, it was it was a big surprise, I think, to everyone. And the club kept it incredibly quiet. So it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if there's someone coming in who is not who we all expect or is not a name that's been circulating on the ITK accounts. Yeah, I think uh, unless there is a, a way in which we've, you know, we've been very gracious to Wickham today. Um, Maybe there could be a situation in which Ben Wayne goes the other way. I don't know. And the name is the name is the the chair boys as well, which is just taking the piss out of Sam at this point. <laughs> yeah, on, on that on that whilst whilst we got yeah, I don't think we've mentioned it so so far. Obviously, Saxon early joins Wick and Wanderers. Um, good move for all parties. Uh, no, because it's I'd say so. It's to Wickham. So no, yeah. Um, but yeah, to a to a club of Wickham's a stature that are not Wickham, it would have been you know, if we, if we can sort of remove the the badge. Uh, <laughs> it's a good. So, so it's we were talking move. earlier, right? That, that Matt Butcher could have had a pick of um, pretty much any of those League One clubs. I feel like the same I could have. Could have walked in, I think he could have walked into any one of the twenty four teams in League One, and he'd have made a difference. 
He's also he's from Portsmouth, isn't he? Am I wrong about that? Yeah, yeah no, he's from Portsmouth. From that, um, right, yeah, I think he could maybe be a bits and pieces player. I think for all you know, he's a hard worker. He's a solid six, seven out of ten player. I wonder if the team was at the very top of that league. Bolton, Peter Brave, and Pompey could could do a bit better in truth. But I guess maybe even for them, he could be a rotation player. Yeah, I you think know, you need players to see you over the line, don't you? I think he's a very solid squad player for any of the any of the clubs in League One. In terms of, you know, actually going in and being a sort of first name on the team sheet standard player, I'd say Wickham is probably about about right, personally. I think we've seen the Butcher's ceiling is, is very high. I mean, he came on at Leeds in the weekend and he was absolutely superb for, you know, 25, 30 minutes. But I think we've also seen some games at this level where he is palpably struggled. And, and I think the fact he wasn't, you know, a first name on the team sheet in our title winning season last year would indicate that, you know, he, he probably would not necessarily be a first name on the team sheet for your Pompeys or your Poshes or your Boltons or whoever. Um, but yeah, certainly a great pickup, I think, for Wickham, given their station in the league at the moment. Um, and yeah, good deal for him in terms of getting first team football at this stage of his career. And, and in seriousness, I do I do think sending early out um, is, is good in terms of getting him game time. I guess my question mark is, I don't know to what extent early coming back in is going to fit Foster's formation plans because I have always been more convinced by him at left back as opposed to left wing back. Uh, not to say he can't play at left wing back, of course, but I think Foster is going to be relying on those left wing backs to be extremely dynamic players. And it's not offensive to early to say that he's not quite that, in my opinion, it's player right very, very highly, particularly on the defensive side of his game. Um, yeah, so I do. I, yeah, hopefully, what this is is a move that's going to get in minutes, get his fitness back up, and he'll come here and be a, a first team contention player next season. But I guess it wouldn't totally surprise me if this is sort of a, a loan presaging some kind of permanent departure in the summer. But I guess we'll have to see on that. If um, I may just, just jump quick... in, oh, J- J- Joe's going to. Yeah, uh, Chris Arrington um, has just tweeted. Um, on Twitter with a with an update, um, he's obviously going to have people much closer to the action than than any of us certainly will. Uh, Chris Arrington has just tweeted saying, "Not expecting any more news out of Argyle tonight. What a transfer window it's been! Eight players leaving, six coming in, and a new head coach too. Um, I think that's probably the next talking point, gents, isn't it? Have you ever known a a January transfer window that's been so hectic?" Um, than this one has. It, it, it's all happened this month, isn't it? It has absolutely staggered me to think that that incredible game against Rotherham, after which Stephen Schumacher got on the helicopter, was not even seven weeks ago. It feels about seven years ago with all that's happened since then. Obviously, the drama of that game itself... It's probably just the Stephen the dra- Schumacher as well. Well, yes, yeah. The drama of that of that game itself... The drama of the coming days after, as the Schumacher news began to filter through, the sort of crazy 10 days over Christmas and New Year when all the talk was about finding a new manager and the Neil Dew snip into Regnum, which had some of the most bizarre games of football I've ever seen. Have you ever heard of a manager who's 50% of his games of a manager have been free all draws? Neil Dew snip's probably the only one. Um, and then, obviously, the, the announcement, which... I think became pretty clear by the Thursday. It was formally announced on the Friday of Ian Foster, that game against Sutton and the sort of crazy few weeks that have followed since then, very up and down few weeks. I mean, on the pitch, pretty good, unbeaten and got a crucial win against Cardiff and progressing in the cup, but obviously off the pitch, very mixed. Um, keeping Morgan Whitaker is the biggest thing. And I think, you know what, the reason I'm still saying it's a six out of 10, as opposed to being a five or lower, I do think we are, certainly if we're not bringing in his ease, I certainly think we are definitely now ending the window weaker than we started it. I kind of would have thought maybe that was in contention if we got his ease, but with, with the lack of depth on top of Luton, we've lost the fact that we've lost quality and depth definitely makes us think we're weaker, in my opinion. But, you know, um, eight outgoings, six incomings, it's been incredibly dramatic. Obviously, the, the Elliot Turner saga being in the middle of that as well. Um, lots of backroom comings and goings. Um, yeah, well, well, to be fair, but yeah, the Flahaven coming coming in as well. Um, it's just been, it, it, it's just not really been a day when nothing's happened in the Argyle world, has there? It's like every day I've been frantically tapping away at group chat, scrolling through Twitter, 
but it's not going to get any less hectic because um, it's not going to get any less hectic because obviously coming up over the next few weeks, we've got, um, I think, back to back midweeks every week for, for five weeks. If um, we beat the Leeds game, if we win the Leeds game, it'll be five midweeks in a row. If we don't, it'll still be four midweeks out of five. Um, Lee, Lee says we're, we're stronger, not weaker. And I think in certain positions that's true. But overall, I'd have to agree to disagree. Um, I think we are slightly weaker just because we've lost a little bit of quality and depth in AM. But the reason I'm still giving that a six out of ten, rather than a five or a four, on a positive note, barring anything incredibly dramatic happening in the next 17 minutes that you'll all watch our reactions to live, barring that happening, Morgan Whitaker is ending this window as a Plymouth Argyle player. And that's something that did not look likely three weeks ago. It's something that didn't look mega likely three days ago, quite frankly. When, when, La, when that Fabrizio tweet came out with Lazio coming in with their bid. And yeah, very, very happy to see that Morgan is going to be um, leading us out quite possibly. He's had the armband a few games at his former club on Saturday. Wouldn't it be absolutely fantastic if he gets a hat-trick in the, and we'll say these next words together, the first away win. That would be absolutely uh, you, brilliant, you wouldn't say, it? You can say that on your own, Sam. Um, in In response to the thing that kevin jones asked about can the rest give us a mark out of 10 um i would probably argue that we're looking at a strong seven if not an eight out of ten for me i know it's disappointing that we lost as as um you know but even kundal and kesler hayden whilst i thought they were two handy players to have um you know, Darko JB's come in, Adam Devine's come in, Adam Forshaw's come in. The midfield looks a little bit stronger for that. Um, in terms of the fullback position, you've got Matty Sorinola's come in. Obviously, today, Lionel Sousa's come in. Um, you know, we've we've obviously already got Miller and, and Galloway and uh, Mumba and Joe Edwards. Let's not forget Joe Edwards is still in the building as well. In the last couple of days, all people have been talking about is Sorinola and Mumba and Miller and uh, now obviously Sousa. Um, so in that respect, I think we're not we're not weaker. Um, I certainly think it's helped bringing in Ashley Phillips as well. I think we're now a harder side to break down. I think we've signed players that Ian Foster knows he can get the best out of. Um, and I just think the massive, massive thing about this transfer window is that as Sam finished off his little bit there, Morgan Whitaker is a Plymouth Argyle player for at least another five months. You know, although Joe, I would that, say that um, Alfie Devine is um, surprised to hear he's been renamed Adam. He, yes, Adam Devine is his brother. Loved him, in, loved him in Maroon Five. <laughs> um, I would say that um, you know the fact that. Um, the fact that Morgan Whitaker is still a Plymouth Argyle player um, surely has to bump up the rating out of 10 a couple of points just because um, just because of what he is, he is valued to us. I mean, I, that's what I would go with. I'd go with a strong seven, seven and a half, eight out of 10 for me. John? I think, well, I said, I said earlier um, eight, but that was because I was mostly because I was trying to bait Sam. But I, I think I would stick with an eight just about. I could see the case for a... A solid seven certainly wouldn't go anywhere near down towards a six. I think I think for me, another way of looking at it, having already given my two cents on the window as a whole, is, you know, I expected all along that next summer would be a, a sort of real window of transition for us, right? That Schumacher would probably at some point either have moved on or, or move on. Obviously, we would lose, in theory, Azaz and, and some of the other lone players. Um I guess, depending on when I was having this thought, you, you either think Whitaker is definitely going to go or or maybe he'll go or maybe he won't. Um, because this is a thought I've had sort of really ever since we got promoted. And I don't think anyone could have foreseen that Whitaker would necessarily be that good. Um, but, but you know, I thought you would... Uh, yeah, I basically thought you would see kind of the, I guess, the second half of the rejuvenation of the squad that we saw last summer happen in the summer, right? That you would see players like Butcher, for example moved on gillespie players like that you know players who were, you know have been great servants to the club were great in league one but, but haven't maybe quite shown that they are championship players and that we would then replace those with a mixture of kind of exciting young talent and then also 
Um, the, you know, players like Adam Forshaw, maybe players who are sort of slightly on the way down in their career, but still with a lot to give, um, who who might constitute a risk just because in our financial circumstances, we're not going to be able to go for really top players if there isn't an element of risk involved. But yeah, I, I guess that was that was kind of what I was expecting next summer. And I think we've had that window now um, by sort of force of circumstance, right? Um, now, obviously, there are elements of it that will be delayed until the summer. I you know, don't want to get everyone on a downer. Strongly suspect Morgan Whitaker will not be a Plymouth Argyle player um, leading the team out on the first game of, of next season. But, you know, if he can continue this form and we can get a, a lot of money for him uh, early doors in the window, then that's a potentially a significant amount of money to reinvest in maybe making a couple of this season's lo loan signings permanent if those players have really impressed or, or you know, bringing in other players and kind of refreshing that loan pool once again. Um so, so I guess for me, like, yeah, while, while there are some individual disappointments in there, and while I do sort of see Sam's point in the sense that you could weigh the the detriment of losing his as sort of very heavily against a lot of incremental positives in other areas, I understand that argument. For me, it just feels like we've taken a big step towards being a more established championship club six months before um, I necessarily might have expected that we'd be in a position to make those sorts of changes. To me, it seems to me like now we have an exciting young championship side rather than a kind of weird mix of very exciting championship players and a few players who are league one players kind of playing above their station successfully in some cases, but above their station nonetheless. So I think from that point of view, it has to be deemed a success um, overall. Um, yeah. And, and, and I th also I really kind of like the fact that we've, in some ways that we've had to do this six months early um, because while again, the circumstances behind it haven't always been ideal. I think it is going to, again, because I don't think we're going to require too much to stay up. It should give, you know, the new manager and new players time to kind of bed in, learn each other's style. And we can kind of work out a way forward that then potentially can become upwardly mobile and sustainable going into next season, rather than having to do all of the figuring out in one go next summer, which is obviously a, a big ask. To me, it feels like a step on the road and, and a positive one. So yeah, that's that's another reason, I guess, why I'm, I'm positive about it. And and yeah, maybe a different way of thinking about it. Aaron, your score out of 10? Yeah, I think, I think for me, it, it's kind of hard because I'm sitting somewhere between um, John and Sam. Um, both. Um, so you're sort of like... You're kind of like halfway standing up then. Yeah. No, well, I'm, I'm on a seat um, and Sam's standing up. So you're sort Sam of like... Perched on a ledge. Hovering. Perched. He's hovering. I think actually, before we get on that, I just noticed this comment from uh, Zach Jones, <laughs> which I have already mentioned. He says the, Zeus, the Sousa uh, intro video was horrendous, by the way. It makes our club look embarrassing. That is wrong. Nah, it's, it's an absolutely bad. fantastic um, introduction video. Uh, it's a brilliant way to... Um, take the piss um a big big fan of it um more more i haven't seen it yet because i've been in work all day and i've been eating tea i've just seen you everyone talking about it. It. Is, is it worth is it worth me watching it's... not as not it... not to leave this stream okay. watch, no. but anyway um no, so, well, no, 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 you, you, sam, sam it's a parody of the video that you were in earlier in the week yeah I mean, <laughs> no, it's not, is it? No way. You must be yeah. joking. If you missed, if you missed, it, genuinely missed this entire discourse. I mean, I know you haven't seen the video, but if you no, missed no, it, no, I've, 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 no, I've seen, I've seen the video of earlier in the week. Yes. Oh yeah. But I've, yes, it's, it's it, it, no way. Is it, is it really referring to that? Yes. Yeah, oh my god. god. That... <laughs> it's a full remake. It's a full remake, yes. and it's class. But who, who, who's doing it then? But so, who, who's, who's? Sorry, no so, way. Uh, yeah. Well, yes. Have a look at, after the no. stream, Sam. Before you go to bed, have a look at it. <laughs> right, no, hang on. Sam, Sam, no. Sam, Sam, have phone with him. Sam, get it up on your phone, even just on silent, because I think all the all the viewers want to see your face watching. And, uh, and Aaron and Aaron can give us his score out of ten. In the yeah, meantime, think, while, while Sam pulls it up. If you if you look at the if you look at the squad objectively, you can argue that it's weaker because we've lost such a incredible. Uh, talent in Finn and Zats, right? So I, I, I do, I do see where you come from. But also, some of these players aren't tested at men's level yet, and I'm, uh, that's why they're, that's why they're with us. Let's be honest. If um, JB and um, Sousa etc. had men's first team minutes, they wouldn't be at Plymouth Argyle. So I think you can, you can look at it both ways. Like on paper, you could, you could argue that we're weaker, but in terms of like the fact that we're bringing in. Uh, <laughs> 
England. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. It is class, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, you're, you're on, on mute. mute. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth did they film that without anybody catching on to it or interrupting? There was, <laughs> there was a there picture was a of it all over Twitter early. all afternoon. Oh my! I've not been on. Oh, I've not been on of it. Oh my god! I mean, what? That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh my god! I, I've never done live react content before, but now I have. <laughs> Completely off the cuff. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. That is, I can't believe they've done that. That's hysterical. But the thing is, it's, it's so funny that <laughs> the people people who will see that who, who don't know what it's referring to will think we're the biggest joke ever. But it's still very funny. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. I mean, in the annals, the, in the annals of videos where it's like the, the sort of general one at the moment seems to be some film scene with the player's head photoshopped in based on a sort of loose pun on their name. That is much funnier than that. It, it, it is, but like if, if you're looking at that without having seen the original reference point, you're thinking, "What on earth is that?" It's going to be seeing that, having absolutely no clue what's going on. Um, Joe, are we are we ready to wrap this up, or, or, or are we gonna are we gonna stay on for a little bit after the deadline, just in case? Yeah, we'll, we'll give it we'll give it ten minutes after Big Ben chimes. I think just for a, a summary. But I have just noticed that um, somebody's put it in the comments as well. It's just flashed up on my phone. Dwight Gale's just been released by. Um, Stoke City. It was, it's a very weird time to be released and have your contract terminated. Um, but he's now available well, on a free transfer. To, you have to have it terminated. Well, no, yeah. It's, without wanting to contradict uh, our fantastic host who's worked tirelessly tonight, it's actually, I would say, a very natural time to do so because, as Aaron mm. quite rightly said, um, if you've had your contract terminated now, you can sign for others after the window. Brad. Whereas if you don't, then if you have your contract terminated outside of the window, then you cannot sign for anyone until the summer. So I think they've clearly let Gale go so that he can then sign as a free agent is what's happened there. I would imagine, could we do worse? It's weird, it's weird how you wouldn't um, want to play for the biggest club in English football, isn't it? It's a weird one, that. Well, you know... They've, they've, it's, had, it's, by the uh... way, they've, had great, they've had a great transfer window. Sam, how would you rate their transfer window out of 10? <laughs> Given, 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 this, given this was an unmissable got, opportunity where you cannot say no due to the resources that they have, how would you rate the transfer window they've had? Have they got Ennis done? Uh, I don't uh, know. Not yet, but... not as far as I can tell. They've only got Millie and Manoff done at the moment, officially, I think. The old sheet most probably has been submitted, yes. I mean, if they've released... I mean, players, not I'd, have have put, I'd have thought they'd have put the deal I mean, sheet in uh, for Ennis. It, worse, worse than ours. Let's say that. Worse than ours. Um, they've. I mean, they've not lost anyone. I mean, Iverson's definitely an upgrade on Bonham in goal for sure, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, they've not really lost anyone who's that good for them. But then they've not really added much to what's quite a flailing squad. And the main player they have added is Kundal. Did they get that foreign lad done? That Belgian lad done or not? They did. Okay. Mm, I'd maybe maybe give them a, a five, maybe. Worse than ours. There's a couple of clubs in the championship though, aren't there? I was five, flicking I was through a six. it. There's a there's a few clubs um flicking through earlier that um haven't done any business at all this month. I know for a fact that Preston, um, unless I've missed something this evening, I don't think they've signed anyone. Um I'm not sure Millwall have done anything today either. Quite a lot, a quite a lot of business going on at Preston, I think. Alan Brown meant to be rumoured to leave, isn't he? Alan, no, that's what I'm referring to, but nothing else. <laughs> yes, he's um he's been linked with a job elsewhere, hasn't he? Um, isn't that a Serie A club as well, Salernitana or something? Have, yeah, um, so absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's been linked with a move there. Rother, Rotherham or another <laughs> sort of job. Uh, Rotherham or another club who have struggled um to get some business done. Um, Birmingham have obviously been I'm pretty proactive, I think. I think Birmingham. Um, I think Birmingham have had a really good um, end to the transfer window, personally, um, particularly with the signing of Alex Pritchard. I think that's a really good one for them. And of course, QPR it's... got in on loan Argyle midfielder Isaac Hayden. Let's not forget that one. And Ipswich got in uh, Plymouth Argyle's Kiefer Moore. Exactly so, so right. It's... Yeah. 
sorry to take this back off the, the EFL back to Argyle, but um, the only thing I will say is that I'm pretty sure Chris Harrington tweeted no more business last time, and then we went and signed Bundu afterwards. Um, so I wouldn't fully rule it out yet. I think I saw a comment uh, say similar You're earlier as well. You're clinging on so to the hope, aren't you? Well, no, I'm just saying it might not be, um, uh, you know, the club have been, uh, how do I put this nicely? Um, haven't always been completely honest with Chris Harrington, let's be honest, or to the best of their knowledge that they're allowed to put out to Chris Harrington. So um, you could potentially see something there. I think the only the only other real talking point, maybe to, as, as we start to wrap this up, is the lack of a striker um, incoming. Three windows now and only Wayne really in. Um, hasn't really cut it yet. Maybe he might under under Foster. I think I know Joe. We've spoken about this previously, maybe two three hours ago. Uh, but it'd be good to get John and uh, Sam's thoughts on the on the lack of. Um, it's like a long two, two hours ago. Yeah, a lack of firepower do... coming in. There. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. But are we are we going to do some kind of um, like Clock. Jules Holland Jules Holland esque. Do we, do we oh, need down. to get that girl off this morning to recreate Big Bang's bongs for us? <laughs> um, we could, but then our our, uh, our live stream will be copyrighted uh, right at the end. Yeah, probably. So, uh, we're just 20 seconds away, Aaron, if you are going to get a little countdown thing going. Uh, no, I am absolutely not. Okay. Um, um but we are just, of course, 20 seconds away from hopefully confirming that Morgan Whitaker is an Argyle player until the summer, which is a vitally important thing to be celebrating. Uh, unless he's announced after the window, like uh, Bundu was the other way around last oh, why, time. Why uh, have you... Yeah, but Bundu wasn't, was it? Bundu was like a nine o'clock. Bundu was like a nine well, o'clock. He wasn't, he, wasn't released after, he wasn't announced after the after the deadline no, because we... Um, Sorry, no, we Aaron, Aaron just said that, and I, yeah. We were all sat there. No, you are right. To see you if we were right. signing anyone else. Thank you to um, Argo fan, by the way, for pointing out. I didn't realise that um, Jaffet Tangana is a decent bit of business by Millwall, that, to be fair. Um, yeah, but there we go, the second, 11 o'clock. Probably, probably the second best Spurs defender who's been loaned out to the championship this month. Yeah, I would agree with that. 11 o'clock. The window is shut. Unless eight, they've got a deal. Yeah, well, out, there we go. Six in, and Morgan Whitaker remains an Argyle player. Um, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so, on the firepower front, now that the moment has gone, I was saying. So, I was saying this uh, offline earlier. I just think si signing a striker is just incredibly difficult. Basically, um, every club in the league has struggled with it. Um, oh, just, just a name. I was listening Sorry. to my uh, good friends George and Ali the other day of uh, the Not the Top Twenty <laughs> podcast discussing this, but no, they were basically saying that. Sorry, what, what was it you tweeted? Would look as a, where you would look as a Championship club would be down into League One, but all the strikers in League One who are actually good are quite old, and we, you they would be asked. You know, a lot of money would be asked for them. I personally do not imagine that we would be competitive for the likes of um, um, Dion Charles or Johnson Clark Harris. Um, and so, um, and I wouldn't want us to get into a huge bidding war with other championship clubs for them. The next level down is League Two, um, where I'd say there's really only a handful of strikers at this stage where you're looking at, you know, them being able to actually come in and score you goals two levels up. And one of them is Ali Al Hamadi, and he's gone to Ipswich, or a club that are on the cusp of the Premier League, maybe, um, and certainly a much, much higher placed in the food chain than us, you know, budgetarily and everything yeah. else. So. John, just to quickly jump in, as as the comment um, suggests on screen there, uh, Reading have just tweeted a picture of Femi Aziz um, with his thumbs up. It's obviously a stock photo from arriving at a ground recently. Just telling Reading fans they can now go, they can now go to bed. Um, thumbs up. So Femi Aziz will remain a Reading player. And that is most definitely, I would say, our business done for the window. Um. So, um, yes, there we go. But, but um, I, you know, I, I think there's maybe, maybe people listening to this who wouldn't be thrilled with us going out and, and spending big bucks on big bucks, even on the League Two striker. Um, but that's the reality of probably like where we would be competitive, maybe even the upper end of the National League. That is how scarce the talent pool for that, that type of striker is. 
um how, how thin the talent pool is i should say at the moment um and that's without you know january inflation on top of everything else you then look you then say well why don't you look abroad well okay there's a number of players in the championship this season who those uh, you know among our listeners who only kind of loosely follow the league and follow our guard probably haven't even heard of because they've made so little impact who were signed for two three four million pounds i mean R ryan may at stoke anyone has he pulled up trees in, in the championship i think he's a a three or four million pound player who came in in the summer um got the um yeah the lad who went into Huddersfield the other week from the Finnish league obviously it's uh no, he's 28 um, not not uh you know maybe too early to say whether he will score goals at this level but he cost two million pounds I think which will be double our transfer record I mean I just think the, the you know those strikers of that of that profile who are worth signing in January are like gold dust you know I guess you could ask could we have got someone in on loan from the kind of foster pool of players um, who's not proven, but, you know, could have just turned out to be a kind of goal scoring gem. I mean, you have seen players in, <clears throat> in previous seasons, like Tom Cannon drop down to this level without having made much of a name for themselves and just become very good goal scorers almost overnight. That's kind of, yeah, maybe I was sort of hoping that maybe something like that would happen. Obviously it hasn't. I just think, you know, as, as we found out, we're a small fish at this level, um, budget wise, if not size of club wise. And that pond of strikers is, is, is very, very slim pickings. Um, honestly, I think we should all just be absolutely delighted to take a second. Now that it seems like this has actually happened, that Morgan Whitaker has chosen to stay at a club with our level of resources when he could have had his pick of a premier league or even a champions league move. That is astonishing, astonishing loyalty from the guy of the type that you very rarely say in, see in football today. And I hope he gets an ovation on Saturday that's commensurate with with that decision, because I don't think anyone on this chat would have begrudged him um, going off. And, you know, the, the question you initially asked was about lack of firepower. There's the firepower. Still a Plymouth Argyle player. I, I yeah, wholeheartedly I agree. Sorry, Sam, just quickly. I wholeheartedly agree with what John said. I think... There's a lot of talk nowadays in football that perhaps loyalty doesn't exist and, and loyalty um, is gone in football. Um, and that's, you know, Morgan Whitaker really has proved that wrong with, with what, you know, we're not saying, you know, it's not to say that um, he wouldn't have had his head turned by certain options that may have come his way. But as John said, he has obviously made it very clear to the decision makers up at Home Park He's quite happy where he is. He doesn't want to go anywhere at this moment in time. He's happy oh. in his career. Um, if he had wanted and... to leave, he'd be gone. I have no no doubt about oh, that. Yeah, whatsoever. exactly. Yeah, the club the club but could talk he... about rejecting bids and whatever. But if he if he had been putting in a transfer request saying I'm unhappy here, having his agent agitate, you know, we'd have. You don't want players like that necessarily sticking around and being held hostage so against their will that they're basically going to go on strike and and not play well for you. That has happened in the past with players of Whitaker's caliber in a similar situation. Um, I don't. I want to be clear. I don't think there was any doubt whatsoever that he would behave like that. But but also that's partially because he is, I think, really bought in here, right? So I think if he had wanted to go, he would have exactly gone. Um, exactly. And there's there's a case where the football club have been very loyal and very trusting towards him so he is now repaying that faith and repaying that loyalty in kind with with not leaving this this month you know he realizes the task that's at hand he realizes how big um you know how big it would be to the and i don't think we can get away from this how big it would be to the future of the football club to stay in the championship this season um so have worked so hard to get to this point with all the lucrative finances that are available at the end of this season and moving forward in the championship to have that taken away after one year would be demoralizing and i think he's aware of the job that's at hand and he really is putting his head down at the moment and he's busting a gut for this football club and as john says i hope not just on saturday but at um on tuesday night against leeds in front of a full house and in front of national television i think graham summed it up perfectly i want nothing more than for morgan whitaker to show the footballing world on bbc on tuesday night just what he's capable of because he deserves it you know he deserves to go to the very top and when that day comes i will be the first to wish him all the very best and i hope to watch his career flourish i'd love to see his career flourish at argo but i do think we have to be a little bit pragmatic about it but look, he is going to have one hell of an ovation on Tuesday night when he comes back to Home Park. 
He will likelihood have the captain's armband as well, which will be another special occasion for him. And look, as John says, you cannot say this window has been a negative when we have kept hold of somebody like Morgan Whitaker. And I echo everything that John said. And by the way, if Whitaker does leave in the summer, he's going to leave as like keys to this. If we stay up, certainly keys to the city club legend after what, like 18 non-consecutive months, like just tells you everything you need to know about the guy's importance to us and the way he's conducted himself, that he's basically already kind of verging on all time club legend status after essentially six months, right? Um, Six months of being our full time player. Hmm. I think I, I, I raised the question with, with my housemates last night and I'll give the uh, those of you who are still listening in a little sneak preview because I'm sure Aaron will tweet it at some point. How far is Morgan Whitaker off being our best ever player um, relative to era? Because obviously, you know, 70s or 80s players, the fitness standards weren't what they are now. But even relative to era, I think the only one competing with him, I think, is Paul Mariner because we've had a lot of players who are good at this level but we've not had many who are consistently absolutely ripping it up. One of the best players in this league. Um, he's up there. He's right up there. And it is, look, although I've not been as entirely positive as some of the rest of you about the lack of, not so such striker, but the lack of depth in AM, it is incredible he stayed. I do just think that ultimately with AMs, we, we've lost three and only brought one in. Um, obviously, Jamie's more of a CM, so it's Azaz, Kundal and Tariq right out and Divine in. So, look, I think three for one, three out one in, it is losing depth. There's no getting away from that. But we've kept the most important one. And that is absolutely huge, huge, huge. Um, and nothing yeah. would be more brilliant than if he could get the winning goal at his former club on Saturday. That would be, you know, so poetic it would be to, to win us the game would be absolutely incredible. Yeah, the only one to who I would say come close in my lifetime as a as a fan, which dates back only as far as about two thousand and two. So I'm I'm not really in the conversation with the Mariner and, and Tynan and all the rest of it. But we think we've had players who are who have been as good relative to level, but that level has been lower typically, right? Like obviously Whisker is a better player than Graham Carey just by virtue of the fact that he is doing this in the championship, which is something Carey hasn't done. Um even and... even relative sorry, John Drew Drop Quinley, even relative to level, I don't think Carey has ever quite dominated the league to the quite the extent Whitaker has this season. He's not been think... a million miles off, but statistically Whitaker is better in terms of output, in terms of like influence over games. I think Carey but again, it's obviously this is obviously relative to level, and that's a conversation we can have. But certainly you have to ask, well, championship. I mean, we, we we've arguably had well, we've had players who've gone on to have good Premier League careers, Dan Gosling, Jack Stevens, players like that, but they didn't really sort of produce their best form with us because they were Stoke kids. Um, City, Stoke City, just very quickly, have confirmed the signing of Niall Ennis for an undisclosed <laughs> fee from Blackburn Rovers. Yeah, they're going to have to... Uh, Interesting. They're going to have to uh, really work on him given the poor facilities at his previous club. No, he's not had a lot of game time due to the... By, by the way, um, Blackburn are right, are right in it. In my opinion, well, they've right, lo right, lo right, yeah, they're, they're, lo losing Adam Water is, is very grim for them. He, he's a good player for them. They're one saving they grace the that they've seen kept hold of the Did they get the striker over the line? Did they get the, the American striker the American... into the end zone? Yeah, oh, they did. They they've did, just yeah. announced it. They've just announced it. Um, Niall Ennis left, and they've also just announced um, another player on loan. Um, as well. well, look, to be fair, that, that might that might be an upgrade for them because Ennis barely played for them. So that might be an upgrade for them, probably will be in, in truth. So that isn't anything for them to worry about. But losing Wharton is worrying because he, he was a good player for them. Their only saving grace is that they've kept hold of both Smodix and Gallagher. If they'd have lost one or both of those two on top of Wharton, I really would be tipping them to go if they lost one or both of those two. The fact that they've kept both of them... Yeah. Is Blackburn's yeah, biggest asset... Is Blackburn's biggest asset not staying in the championship, John Dow Thomason, John? No, I was about to say the identity of the manager is the biggest concern that I would have if I were them. I'm sure he'll find someone else to blame if they uh, do manage to slide into relegation trouble. <laughs> yes, that, that facilities jive has not aged well, has it? It has to be said. Not one the, things that have been said no. the things that have been said in football recently, that is one of the things that has aged the poorest that I'm, that I'm aware of. The other ones who have had a good transfer window, and we, um, I don't know if either you two caught it earlier when Gab Sutton was on, 
um, is Hull City, um, who've actually just announced another signing. They've just announced the loan signing of Anna Saruri from many, the Hundley on loan to the season. How many Premier League wingers? Yeah, a terrifying amount. Um, but um, you... Oscar Espinian's just been recalled, though, so maybe zaruri has been brought in to replace him. I'm not sure, but they've had a hell of a window hull. Um, they're going to be a, they could be a real force in the in the playoff race, definitely. Um, you just you just wonder with Stoke, don't you? I don't know. I just think the manager going back to to dip into two of his former players, one of whom they are already their fans are already not enamoured with, rightly or wrongly, by the sound of it. The other of whom, you know, is a club legend here, and I'm not going to speak ill of him at all, but is basically totally unproven at championship level and, and cannot stay fit. You know, for a club that are talking the talk and presumably sort of pulled Schumacher away, saying you're going to have a load of resources, that is very under. I would be extremely underwhelmed by that if I was a Stoke City fan. If I was one of Stoke City's 600 fans, I would be very. So, so, so they've got four. They've got four players in, which is Iverson, Cundall, Ennis, and this Belgian. I don't know anything about the Belgian lad. I won't pretend to. He could be good. Ennis again can't stay fit. Not really at this level. Could be decent, but wouldn't bank on it. Cundall. Hasn't started great there, has he? And Iverson is surely an upgrade on Bonham. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give them that one for sure. But, um, yeah, that's not exactly a mm. outstanding window for them, is it, at all? Yeah. If you think Shuey's using his leverage and his contacts to get in Morgan Whitaker and Finn Azaz in January, then you have been <laughs> rudely disabused of that notion, haven't you? Yeah. Um are we finishing off with a little line on Swansea at the weekend, Aaron? Yeah, go I'm on. Not sure we've asked, I'm not sure we've asked these two about Swansea at the weekend, have we? We seem to have asked Aaron, everyone do you want, else. Do you want to just cut to the chase, Sam, and just say the line? I do not think we're going <laughs> to win on Saturday. Oh, um, for crying because... out loud. No, 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 What's going right. on here? That means we might actually do it. Because it's, it would just be too perfect and too poetic, and real life tends to be a bit more rough around the edges. I think it will be the closest we've come yet. I think we will, uh, Ian Foster says hello, clearly. Um, I think we will do something we've not done all season, which is lead into the second half. But I can see Swansea getting us back. Luke Williams has lost all three of his games so far managing them. I I think he, he can't lose yeah, all drew, his first at, four, can he? Surely? They drew at Birmingham. They drew at Birmingham. Sorry, lost, lost three of his first four, then my apologies. Um, so, yeah, okay, but... I, yeah, I just think it would be so perfect and poetic and real life's a bit more rough around the edges. I think we will lead into the second half, which we've not done yet all season, but they'll just get us with a sucker punch. And I think it will be a 2-2 draw to take back to Devon, which would still be an absolutely fine result and one point closer to safety. I think, I think we'll win on Saturday. Um yeah, it sounds right that life isn't that perfect, but like sometimes it is. And and it's not it doesn't have to be about kind of fluke or kind of circumstances or stars aligning or or whatever. It can just be the fact that we look very good and upwardly mobile and solid. They look like they're a bunch of strangers who've never played together because they're trying to relearn a system that they unlearned in the summer to have a brief interregnum of a manager the fans hated and force the board to sack after three months, um, which is not a recipe for success. They look very, very open and we are very good going forward. And we're going to have a player going back there who is going to be phenomenally motivated and is also a fantastic player for the level. And in addition to Matty Soranola, we also have Morgan Whitaker going back to play against his former club. So, um, no, in seriousness, I, I just think that that those are factors that don't boil down to, you know, a bit of stardust or whatever. It's It's real tangible things that just make me think that, Look, we've had a lot of bad luck away from home as well. So we are due something to break our way, I think, at some point. Um, like, you know, the, the variance is going to, at some point, level out. And part of that bad luck has been that we've played teams away from home at bad times. And for once, we are going to a team who are in horrid form under a new manager, still learning their their system. Obviously, as are we, but we seem to have figured out the new system a lot quicker than they have. But, you know, I think partly because it's less kind of philosophically um, extremist than what Williams is trying to do over there. So I think they're still learning. I'm obviously not going to make any predictions as to how the Williams appointment is, is going to go. Obviously, these things take time. But 
their fans made it very clear during the Duff era that the way they play football is more important to them than success, seemingly. So Williams' mandate is very, very clearly to inculcate that style. They haven't got it down yet. And I just think that we have the the tools at our disposal, again, one of whom is going to be phenomenally motivated to make that, make it happen for us. And I think we'll win. I think it'll be 2-0. Yeah, I was on, um, I was on with... Uh, Swans cast earlier on this afternoon before before jumping on once finished work. Um, we'll make sure we get that tweeted out, Aaron, won't we? Um, when it comes through, but um, they were a little the chap I was speaking to on there was a little bit concerned with how we play and how we're effective when we're on the counter attack. Um, just a little bit concerned about how that's going to pan out for them. They seem to be playing quite a high line. Um, with Luke Williams, which is sort of like a dream, I would say, for Morgan Whitaker, Alfie Devine and Ryan Hardy if a, a position's playing such a high line. Um, but as John says, we've got, you know, a, a player who is potentially going to wear the captain's armbrand, who's going to be incredibly motivated to go on and put on a show, um, who just happens to be the ta- second top goal scorer in the championship. Um, we are setting up to be very hard to break down um make ourselves tougher to beat on the road which is a great great help um and look we are scoring goals for fun at the moment you know we're one of the highest scorers in the division and we've just got to keep on going and i'm i'm with john i think this is for once we're actually playing a team at the right time um you know it's it's nothing against nothing against Swansea because I think Luke Williams might eventually get it right there I think they're just at the moment they're on a similar time um both Foster and Williams are on similar time scales um with their appointments and Foster's been able to mold the squad by getting the right players in whereas Williams hasn't been able to so um I just think we're on a little bit different trajectories between now and the end of the season um you know, and we can go there and hopefully um, as long as we as long as we are solid to or solid at the back and tough to break down, I think it's going to give us one hell of a platform to, to go and counter attack on on Swansea. And I do think um, I am going to say the line along with John um, that I do think this is our first away win. Yeah, I, I can see us going there and getting something. I, I, I think you, you guys have covered that well. I think. Um... Marcus makes a good point about Ajari. I suppose he's out of contract, so we, we could still um, bring him in. He could be the, the Femi Aziz, but a cheaper option, I suppose. Because, um, y- yeah, you can still sign free agents out of the window, right? As long as they've not left the... Yeah, brilliant. Um, that was a stupid question because that's obvious. Yeah, uh, back to... Back to I think there is a cut-off for it, though. I think there is a cut-off for when, you, when players can join clubs. I don't it think works. it's like a free throw between now and the end of the season, but I yeah, think the, um, certainly... For the next couple of weeks, they're all right to, to link up with other clubs. The window, can I, can I just the window, the window oh. for that will close, but it is currently ajar. Fuck's sake. Can I just throw a little bit of a spanner in the works? 11 20 pm. Um, um, oh, no. it's well, okay, it's 11 20 pm, but we've not yet had any kind of Chris Harrington tweet or even tweet from the club confirming that all business is done. Just well, wonder maybe if there might though. be a deal sheet. We have, we have had the Errington tweet. Well, we, we've had a tweet saying it didn't look likely. That was about half an hour before. But I feel that I feel that he would have tweeted to say that maybe something was, was maybe I'm reading too much into. It, I don't know, but I wonder if I there would, might yeah. still be. Um, I would suggest I would suggest it's twenty past eleven. He's been at work all day and he's probably at home now with a Horlicks with his slippers on, watching um, tonight's yeah. Grand Chester episode or something. What or this, this, yeah, hi, hi Chris. <laughs> <laughs> may, 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 maybe you're right and I, and I just want to say that if we do now go offline and we announce an incoming immediately after this stream Not ends I just on. want to say I told you so um, no I don't know that we are going to sign anyone I could be reading far too much into that but um, yeah whatever I don't think, I don't if we think do we do club, if we don't we don't the club also didn't tweet goodnight in the summer did they I don't think either <clears> no think true but Erring, Errington did though yeah, well, yeah all right, no, you're right he's effectively done that tonight i think 
<clears throat> yeah, okay, okay. I'm I'm reading too much into it. Well, I probably need to hop off now because my um housemates are both now in bed and they've I mean, both got I mean, work tomorrow. Yeah, we so. are we are quite literally wrapping this up right now. I think the only thing I would have liked to have seen was the club put out a tweet saying don't go to bed just yet, and then slapped a huge offer on a multi-pack of Carabao right at the 11 o'clock deadline. That would have been brilliant. I think that's uh, that's enough for us, unless there is a deal sheet and we will jump back on at midnight. Absolutely won't be happening. Um, but You can from, if you like. But I won't be there. Um, yeah, no, appreciate that. I think this is the first time we've dipped under 150 f- uh, watches all night, so it's been really impressive. Uh, cheers for tuning in. Cheers for your comments. Cheers for the questions. Uh, before you go, obviously, make sure you hit subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Where else are we? That's about it. Oh, subscribe on on your podcast platforms as well. Um, I think um, that's everything from us. Cheers, guys. Yes, um, Sam is Sam is off to sleep. Um, which he does hanging from the ceiling like this. Like a, like a bat. <laughs> like a bat. <laughs> Cheers, Aaron. Cheers, guys. Thank you all very much. Bye, all. Bye now. Bye-bye.